With Liquor Barn, you can shop your favorite bourbon, that perfect bottle of wine, or discover something new. To place an order for pickup or delivery, download the Liquor Barn app, visit liquorbarn.com, or call your nearest Liquor Barn location. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our email list for all the latest news on products, promotions, and events. Liquor Barn, where Kentuckians go to celebrate life. Cheers! We could tell you that Penelope Bourbon's Four Grain Stray Bourbon Whiskey is a multiple double gold winner at SIP Awards, or that wine enthusiasts named it a Best Buy, or that Tasting Table named it one of the 12 best small batch bourbons under $40. But really, all you need to know about Penelope Four Grain is that it aims to please. Whether you enjoy it neat or mixed in your favorite cocktail, Penelope Four Grain is a staple in every well-stocked bar. Pick up your bottle at PenelopeBourbon.com. Hey there, I'm Carrie Van Winkle, founder of Pappy & Company, where we celebrate family heritage and Southern craftsmanship. Check out our curated collection of artisanal goods that embody the spirit of Kentucky. From our signature barrel-aged pepper sauce aged in Pappy Van Winkle bourbon barrels to our luxurious leather goods inspired by generations of tradition, each item reflects our commitment to quality and legacy. Our line of gourmet food items are thoughtfully selected to bring the taste of the South to your table. Indulge in what I can say is the best bourbon barrel-aged maple syrup on the planet a perfect blend of buttery rich flavors that elevate any dish or cocktail. We're big fans of the Bourbon Life podcast and we're honored to share the legacy of our great grandfather, Pappy Van Winkle, with all of you. So visit pappyco.com for 15% off your purchase with code BOURBONLIFE15. Limestone Farms bourbons are like a secret portal to a world of rich flavors where high proof meets smooth satisfaction. Every barrel is meticulously crafted and blended with a specific message in mind. Experience clean delineated flavor profiles that will have you engaged from the first sip to the final drop, making your palate beg for just one more taste. Limestone Farms, bringing heritage home. Welcome to the Bourbon Life Podcast, your source for all things bourbon. Join your hosts, Mark and Matt, as they drink and review bourbons, share news about upcoming events, interview the who's who in the bourbon world, and most importantly, bring you along for the fun of living the bourbon life. Now, here's your hosts, Mark and Matt. All right, everybody, welcome back for another episode of the Bourbon Life Podcast. I'm your host, Mark, and with me here tonight live in the Bourbon Life Studios, it is, after a long delay and absence, the Bourbon Life crew. Philip, what's up, man? Not much. I'm ready to get some pores going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get you loosened Wearing up. Wearing your shirt, dude. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's oh, the yeah. best shirt you've had on the show. That's yet. awesome. That's right. I like yeah. to see a shirt, though. <laughs> no, that's... That, which that's one? Selena? Or Selena, not Selena. 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 Yeah, no, yeah. Macho Man, man, with the flat. Uh, yeah, that is that is the classic. That's the best ever. That needs to be his new profile pic here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, I probably just need to get the whole step and repeat with that on there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like oh, and yeah. Spider-Man. Just yeah. Put Spider-Man on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got Matt here. Matt, what's up, man? Hey, not much, Mark. You doing all right? Yeah. Of course, you're always here. So, you know. I am always you here. You know, I we suppose. see each other every week, you which is cool. You should still be really excited to I, see him. Yeah. Did, did I not, not just... Not the, you're <laughs> always here. And Matt's here. And, and, and Matt. I did not say like that. I'm like, I just said Matt's here. And welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, he talks I'm, about Matt like that friend you invited, but only because your mom made you. <laughs> or like when your uh, your, like your good buddy has to bring his younger brother along. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, hey, Tony. Oh, I uh, see you brought you. Yeah, brought your little kid brother. To, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Stacy's here. Stacy, what's up? Hi. We've not seen you in forever. I know. Forever. You guys thought that you got rid of me. But uh, guess what? We I'm thought back. you just dumped us, you know, yeah, well, like a bad relationship. Yeah. Like you just like I thought about ghosted us. I yeah. Thought yeah. About yeah. Yeah, she'll text us only like once a week now. I know. Group chat, I know. Yeah. And then, <laughs> but it's only because she feels bad. Like I can't let them down. I'm like I just. Yeah. Oh well, no, I feel, I don't feel bad. Not at all. Yeah, don't no. don't kid yourself, Chad. Not at all. Speaking of Chad, we got Chad here too. Hey. 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 What's up, Chad? What's going on? You doing all right, man? I am. Awesome. Something smells old and dusty. I think it's because. Because Chad's here. year older. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Happy birthday, yeah, Chad. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. man. Congratulations yeah. on that. We missed Stacy's birthday. Was it last month? Yep. I mean, what the hell, dude? Nobody. I was like, nobody. nobody. Even said it. When's your birthday? Let me guess. June seventeenth. Six. Six. Damn. Yeah, missed her birthday, man. I was like, uh, like a week after. I'm like, I texted. I'm like, what the? 
I was like, did I miss your birthday? That's funny because uh, I never put anyone's birthday in my phone and usually just like, it's so-and-so's birthday today. Yeah. Uh, so do you not have your birthday in your phone? Uh, no, because oh. I like to keep my shit private. Oh, but thanks my... for just telling, let, making me tell everyone. <laughs> there you <laughs> go, everybody. Don't forget, next June year, 6th. June 6th, Stacey. 2025, right. Stacey be yes, 42. Right. Uh-huh. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right, bitch. Yeah. You so just wait. Uh, so we've got an interesting show tonight. This wait, is something... wait, Mark, oh, wait. how are you? It doesn't matter. No one Nobody cares. cares. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, moving on to our uh, first topic. <laughs> yeah, I did a barrel pick today, so I'm in good spirits. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a good is that afternoon. why you're so sleepy? Yeah, I'm a sleepy, mm, and yeah, but I'm in okay. a good, I'm in a good place right now. A couple more pours. What, what'd you pick, and where, who was liquor barn? Uh, it was no, it was actually with the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Oh, so, yeah. oh. <laughs> it was Insert a hair flip here. It was, a, <laughs> it was a 1792. So it's a, they're doing a bottled and bond. Ooh, yeah, so the best ones. Yeah, yeah so yeah. we got to pick, but we were picking. It was kind of fun because we were picking uh, the barrels. They gave them to us at barrel strength. Oh, nice. So we were tasting through that, and then we watered them down a little bit to see what, you know, if anything changed. So we had a consensus. We picked a barrel, so it was a lot of fun. Got to take a little tour. I've never toured Barton, the 1792 distillery, That's ever. It's pretty cool. It's a factory. Mm-hmm. It, it is. I mean, it's, it's very it's, industrial. Yeah, It is very industrial, and it's very historic. Like, I don't think yeah. people realize how historic, like, the Thomas S. Moore distillery actually is. Oh, I agree. It's and pretty that's cool. What, you know, uh, Ross Cornelison is the new master distiller, which I, I don't know Ross. I don't know if you guys never know. Never met him. No. Never, never met him. Uh, you know, now that Danny is, and Danny was there, Danny Khan. Oh, Danny did come. Danny. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so yeah, it was yeah. awesome to see Danny good dude. Um, hang out with him for a little bit. But Ross Cornelison was there as well. Good, good. I call him a kid. He's young, right? He's probably in his 30s. He's, he's a kid to me. Um, this guy's like 50. There, yeah. yeah. I'm 56, <laughs> man. So I'm more than 50. Uh, but we had a great time. Just a lot of fun and just a, just a great place. But, you know, he's telling us the history. And the road, when you drive in, you know, there's trucks and stuff all mm-hmm. the time coming through there, man. Uh, it's not open to tours just because I think it's a danger, right? There's so many trucks and so much stuff going on there. But that used to be like the connect, like the main road yeah. between Bardstown, like New Haven or some I don't know where it was. But like that was the main road that ran right through the heart of the distillery. So I'm like, that's kind of crazy. So when I went there two years ago, like when you, you guys, because when you and Matt did the Bourbon Life, 792 mm. pick the mm. the right like the i think it's like the week after uh which thanks for the invite but the week <laughs> after i picked one show hey we're we uh, are liquor barns you, you know salt and wound hey matt or not matt brad brad brad, knew I, brad knew I worked at total wine you know he would talk to me you know <laughs> i mean it might have been at like 1 a.m on a saturday after he had after, after a few drinks after a few right? drinks but <laughs> get, hey, just get a, a message text. from brad but, Wayne, but, hey, uh, what's hey, up, up asshole you up yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you up yeah. <laughs> But New I was phone, who dis? I was sitting there because I parked next to what used to be the gift shop, which mm-hmm. is where all the trucks come in. Oh yeah, man! And that's where they do like their grains, like they're testing their grains and stuff. And I parked there because that's where the lady was just like, you know, I was late to the barrel pick because uh, I got stuck on the highway behind a wreck on my way there. And um, I parked there, and so I'm sitting there, I'm like, all right, well, there's a semi behind me. I was like, oh, I'll send some emails for work. Da 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 da. I was like, I'm gonna go to Heaven Hill, and I went to put my car in reverse and realized no semi's pulling up. So I waited for him. Took about 20 minutes, got to Heaven Hill. I was 46th in line. They put out 45 old fits, uh, 16 years that day. And I was so pissed. I'm like, if I wouldn't have sent those like 10 emails, you I would have been there. I would have been there to get it. Yeah. But that's what you get for working. Off yeah. the hey, clock, no less. Cool story, bro. I was, yeah, off the clock, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, what are we going to talk anyway, about today? What are we going to drink? This is not what the chat. Are, show. We're drinking so, the champagne of yeah. beers. Thanks for hey, staying. Yeah. I right. love, I love the, uh, the small bottles, um, so like Coors Banquet, like the little ponies, the little ponies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I lived in Moorhead, we, me and my the guy I lived with, my roommate, we would drink our. So you the said dumpster, Moorhead, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the dumpster was about fifty feet from. Don't our lie, you balcony. lived in. The uh, you dumpster. throw them. You throw them. We throw them in oh, there. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, uh, <sighs> the lady below us started complaining, so the guy started putting a, a lock on there, so we couldn't do that. No. Couldn't throw your beer can. Every time I drink a Miller High Life, I think about John Edwards with Dad's drinking bourbon, man, because he posts Miller High Life all or well, used to on mm-hmm. his stuff. So John, if you're listening, on you're probably not. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. fun fact: I'm sponsored by the Miller High Life. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. awesome, man. I'll br- I'll bring my little contract thing next yeah. episode if I can find it. Yeah, I'll awesome. Bring, yeah. 
Yeah, they pay I, they pay you like regularly, like what? No, they paid me a dollar one time. <laughs> yeah. It was something I just signed up online. It was like be sponsored by Miller High Life. And I was like, Fuck it, let's <laughs> do it. Yeah. Hey, they, nobody they ever went broke taking a profit. Yeah, that's that's right. right, man. Take yeah. a take a dollar, man. So yeah, I they're gonna give it to you. It's like a lifetime sponsorship. Hell yeah. <laughs> There hey, you get them up. Hey, say, hey, can no. I get some free beer? Don't or spend it all in one place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So what are we doing tonight? Chad's got this idea. Like you came up with the, the idea I for did. the show tonight. So, so uh, when I when I found out that we weren't going to be able to take a little weekend, like extended weekend trip, because um, Brittany and I, we have the same birthday. So both of our birthdays. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're a year apart oh, to the lame. day, almost okay. to the hour. Uh, lame. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Did you guys get matching necklaces that say that? They got matching we t-shirts. Yeah. We actually Airbrushed. Have, yeah. Not, Negligee. Yeah. It's not negligee. <laughs> oh, ouch. Wow. Oh, matching boy. purses. Um, oh, that's a great idea. Hey, man, I was rocking tangent. I was rocking this kick-ass fanny pack when I was on my cruise, by <laughs> the a, way. It's a merce. And no, I didn't go I didn't go for that giant ass sling thing. A kick ass too much. fanny pack, dude. But that is like there's so many things wrong with that sentence. It was kick ass. It's it like '90s to the core. It's, it's okay. Like, it, it, Do you hey. have pictures? Uh, actually, you know what? My mom. I'm gonna show everyone this right here. <laughs> My mom so the only picture of me, of me. Hold on. Shut up. The only picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> this really has hold turned on. into the Chad show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? But, yeah. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me. Woo. Just holding it. Holding it. Riveting content. I, I gotta find. Yeah. So the only picture that my mom that I have with me with this fanny pack on is uh God damn, where is it at? <laughs> uh, anyway. Maybe you can find it during the break, Chad. Tell us what we're gonna be drinking tonight. Oh wow. <laughs> but look at those colors. Hey, I've always been a big fan of uh um Expressing yourself. Yes. That oh, and <laughs> and the hornets. So like you get purple, blue, and white. Like I always loved those colors as a kid. Okay. All right. Uh, but there's my fanny pack. So you know Oh and yeah. give it a finger. Yeah, yeah nice, yeah. dude. We were extra nice. Are you not gonna show Matt? No, uh, he didn't no, Matt it. don't have to see anything. Yeah, yeah. No. That's right. He'll he'll air, air drop it tonight. Matt, you're yeah, not Matt. Matt. he'll show him later tonight when they're having a happy birthday. <laughs> we were together. exiting the boat to go to Mexico and so we had to go down all these for anyone who's been, never been on a cruise before. Uh, the boat we were on, we had to go to like three escalators and we have to show our ID and we have this card that shows, hey, we're on the boat legally. Here's our, our little pass card for our room and whatnot. We're going down the escalator. I'm flipping off my mom, taking a picture. And not once did I realize that as we're getting to the bottom, there's a security guard who's standing there just staring right up at me. And I'm looks like I'm flipping him off. Oh, man. And so, of course, I get pulled to the side and he's like, do you think that's funny? And I'm like... Well, I flipped my mom off, so I thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Oh, I didn't see her taking a picture. I'm sorry." Move meanwhile, on. meanwhile, Chad had to take a flight back to the U.S. and missed the whole tour. Anyway, what are we drinking tonight, man? So, all right. So, my plan was, um, speaking of my cruise, I bought a couple bottles on the cruise. Uh, the only thing, because we didn't go hunting through liquor stores, I got it in duty free. I got two bottles in duty free, and they're both Jack Daniels. And Mark, of course, being the hater that he is, uh, was like, "I love Jack Daniels." It hurts you to say that, doesn't it? It really does, yeah. That's a lie. I don't Sorry, hey, you don't you even know, like the single barrels? When you when you hey, That's the only Jack Daniels I'll drink. When Mark goes into that proof. closet, he chugs Jack Daniels. So. <laughs> I um, uh, so I got two bottles. One of them was a bourbon, one of them was a rye. They're both 107 proof and they're five hundred mLs, which I thought was unique. Half liters for thirty five bucks. That's interesting. Uh so two bottles for seventy. Man, this beer's making me burp. Um but I thought it'd be fun it's to a do champagne of beers, it of course is. it will. Yeah. Uh, it's not a French beer, but um, I thought it'd be fun to do. Is it is it Jack Daniels or is it not Jack Daniels? And so, oh, so that's what every, we're doing. Everything's blind tonight. Oh, damn. So you have to decide of the three pours we drink tonight. That's why I said we could do it all in one setting if you wanted. Oh, to. I got gotcha. you. No, that's too no, much. We'll, yeah, too much. Um, too much. We have we to decide what you're drinking, and if you want to leave a little bit in your glass to compare, you can, or I can top it off in between the rounds. I got you. And we can figure out is it Jack Daniels or is it not Jack Daniels? So you, we have a Jack Daniels rye, a Jack Daniels bourbon. So I'm only doing the bourbon. So I didn't bring uh, the rye. So there are three bourbons that I brought. And you have to decide is and it Jack one Daniels? of which is Jack Daniels, or we have to decide if any of them. He's gonna fuck with us, and all of them are gonna be Jack. You Daniels. have so it's up to you. I didn't say that I brought anything Jack Daniels. It's just is it Jack Daniels or is it not Jack Daniels? <laughs> <laughs> you're so, freaking so it could be three different bourbons, but it you're can, not expecting us then to say 
It is. I don't like, expect you to say like, oh, rare, yeah, no. I'm just lands. I'm looking at you guys saying, is a, this a, actually Jack Daniels? Yes, as a crew of one really you. good taster and, and three other people who know how to drink whiskey. <laughs> um, and then Mark. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and Mark. Um, wow. Uh, I'll be over here to decide is there Jack Daniels or is there not? And or are they all or are they all not Jack Daniels? So there are. So I brought this idea up to Matt, but then I realized I don't want Matt to know anything. So it's, it could they could all be Jack Daniels. It could all not be Jack Daniels. It's just is it or is it not? So, so Chad is just it's a, it's it's a true blind of blind. A true of blind. blind of blind because we have no idea. He so, went behind the curtain and pulled. Yeah, everybody. I know. We can't see anything behind the curtain. Right? I like so, that. Where there's a curtain now. You like the curtain? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got so their own. Let's talk from... nose on number one here. Let's, hey, Matt, let's what do you get on the nose, man? Down to business. Well, you're like over there, it's like with your face down in it. So tell me what you get. Well, we got to keep the train on the rails here. Train on the... Okay. Yes. We yeah. Do. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I like the nose on this. It's a uh, good corn forward sweetness from the corn. There's uh, a good amount of vanilla, kind of a creamy nougat type taffy note as well. A little bit of mint makes me think maybe there's some rye in this mash bill that we're drinking. Uh, it does not nose too hot. I, I would guess somewhere in the 90 to 100, maybe 105 proof. Okay. Um, but nice uh, approachable nose. A little bit of cherry. There's some dark fruit with it as well. All right, so uh, I'm not much of a Jack Daniels drinker, but from a nose perspective, Matt, does it hit the notes? Or are you familiar enough with Jack Daniels? I'm not familiar enough with Jack Daniels. Judges, is that cheating to ask other people to to decide your answer for you? No, I don't think so. I'm I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the to the judges here. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, yeah. We're not. You're supposed to be the master. You're supposed to know. Yeah. What the? Yeah, Yeah, master. Wow. You can't ask questions. Denied. Wow. All right. It has been declared that Marcus cannot ask other people <laughs> what he's drinking. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys just tell me what I'm drinking, please? I smell caramel and vanilla. Yeah. Stacy, what do you get? Can I ask her what she gets on the nose? Yeah. <laughs> Dang, dude. You can do that. Wow. This is harsh. You got to take I'm, mental notes. Did I, did I say how much I was missing you guys here? Because you lied, like, didn't you? He didn't say he missed me. He said he missed no, Stacy. I'm lying. God. So He's full of shit. He didn't miss me either. You're right. Um, I see Matt every week in case you guys didn't know. I do too. Yeah. This one gave me. <laughs> Poor uh, Matt. Matt, I feel really sorry for you. I know. Everyone's getting shit on here, but Matt really gets the worst. <sighs> Man. All right, Stacey, what do you get? Anyway, um, very desserty nose. Um, it gave me like baby Amberana vibes to mm, it. I got okay. some like cinnamon toast crunch vibes to it, but not like as forward right. as it typically is with an Amberana finish. But that's what hit me initially. Um, I am getting a lot of like cherry notes from this one. So. Okay. Philip? I was going to bring up the cherry. I got a little bit of tobacco, but I feel like I'm getting that classic Mashville one Buffalo Trace kind of cherry that they have on. Okay. Chad, can Mark. you can you throw in notes or <clears throat> sure. thoughts yeah. or if you want to? You don't have to, but no, yeah, um, I will. So I agree with all the cherries. So I got I got cherry, blackberry, a lot of lot of dark berries. So it was more of like a black cherry note for me. Um, the Ambarana e profile that Stacy brought up, I really didn't think about till she said it. I'm like, I do. There is a lot of cinnamon sugar, cinnamon sugar, a yeah, ton yeah. of yeah. cinnamon sugar on this, yep. and I can't get away from that. But um, whoever said, I can't remember if it was Stacy or Matt, who said desserty. But I mean, it's to me, it's honey. It's it's like sweet oak, like black cherry syrup. Um, the Mashville one, Buffalo Tracy kind of rings a bell. A little bit of rye coming through on the nose, like you do. There's a little bit of florality to it, but yeah, yeah, it's a really good nose. Um, it is a great nose. It is, and so here's what I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this out there and say, based on the experience, the knowledge that I have of the Jack Daniel products that are out there, this is not Jack Daniels, but in my opinion. Um, but it does have a nice nose. Um, I agree with everybody with the cherry notes, you know, those dark fruits that you talk about. I got oak on it as well. Kind of came through, uh, the cinnamon sugar that Stacy pointed out. It wasn't jumping out, but as soon as she said it, it was I like, know, yeah. I think it ruined me. I know. It's like, it's like, fuck now I'm drinking an Amberana barrel. Right. It's so, not that pungent. It's, it's just, not. It I agree. A slight I know, but it, it. once she said it, it's it like really instantly clean. just jumped yeah. out like, wow, that's mm-hmm. like, it's there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I get almost like a uh, like a brown sugar type of sweet note as well. Some sugar, you know, talking about the the amberana, but it almost goes in almost to like a burnt sugar aroma to me as well with that cherry. You uh, said taffy too, so like 
that okay yeah i can't remember if i said brown sugar or not but yeah brown sugar tan, it's almost like that pulled sugar almost mm-hmm. like yeah, right it's almost like a, a like a burnt cotton candy yeah um but yeah those are really like i didn't think of those yeah so that's that's what i get on it but yes i'm i'm gonna say what i mean do you guys think can i ask them if they think it's a yes yeah, yes now that can. we've gone through that we've not tasted that we've not done a palate I mean, I've right. So I've once, okay. So yeah, I mean, you can, you can, we can every every step. We can say, do you think it is? You think because your your nose and your palate are gonna might, sure. might go against each other. Yeah. Well, but I'm just round I'm, three is when we'll find out. Okay, I'm just so, saying. The, I'll jump ahead here. All right. I think the, the palate for this one, um, to me, tastes like a weeded bourbon. Mm. Okay. I think. Um, I understand. I'm totally gonna make an ass of myself. Saying that, but I could see what this. What else is new? Well, that's fair. Four and a half seasons <laughs> uh, in. Why stop now? Uh, why stop now, man? Yeah. Just let it out, man. Let the ass out. Let it oh, hey, day, let baby. It hey, no, happy we've birthday. seen the memes. We have seen, we have seen enough record, of the happy everybody, birthday. We haven't seen no. Matt's ass. No, no, it's just a We don't know a meme. Meme. We have well, a meme that Matt sent We don't know. Out. It could be Jack Daniels. It could be Matt. Uh, uh, hey. That's a t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that the is bourbon a, life. That's a, that's that's a good t-shirt. Could be like, yeah. With with the guy like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> he had Jack Daniels no. hat. Oh, no. <clears throat> it's a great I, it's the silhouette. Uh, yes, yeah. the silhouette. No. Per, yep. Anyway, Matt, go ahead, man. Um, it has a lot of those bready cherry notes, a little bit warm, kind of bi- like biscuity or crackery. All uh, a little thin though, I think on the palate for me, like not a whole lot of finish kind of dies off a touch um the thoughts would have been like maybe maker's mark this could be also like just like a knob creek 100 Hmm. proof possibly it's not as nutty as i usually get from a jim beam product Mm -hmm. like that um do you think the palette is knob creaky mm, i i don't unless it's kind of like an off Pick. Yeah. off flavor or profile because I was another thing based mm. on the nose I was thinking Evan Williams bottled in bond mm. oh. but it, I didn't I don't think it's as sweet not as much cherry and not like not that sweet oak type note and certainly I don't believe on the palate to me it drinks like that I do get that Knob Creek like peanut but it is subtle it's mm-hmm. not as mm-hmm. as forward as it is in the typical Knob Creek so I do not think it's Jack Daniels okay Philip. Mm, yeah, I don't think it is. Anything on a palate that stands out or you think about or uh, the peanut flavor kind of lingers, but it is a it's pretty flat. It doesn't yeah. drink like it's very high proof. Stacy, you were like concur. Sca- Matt was kind of talking and you're like concur. Yeah? yeah. Any other any other flavors that stand out on the palate finish for you on that? Uh, it was a little bit more peppery up front on this one than I was expecting based on the nose. Yeah. That's just me. But the finish was also a little bit um, thin and short compared to what I thought it would be on the nose. I think it's really grain forward to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it, I think it tastes like almost like it's young. Um, Do you think it's Jack Daniels? No, I don't think it's Jack Daniels, but I think it's, I, it almost tastes, it tastes young to me. What do we think the proof is on this one? Uh, I'm going to guess probably close to a hundred proof on that. I'm going to say like mm, 103 just because of that little bit of that spice. Mm-hmm. That's on yeah. The front. Yeah. <clears throat> But I don't. I don't think it's a Jack Daniels. That's just this that's one. Just, I think that the nose mm. and the palate. If you were taste like you could almost say these were two different bourbons. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't. Agree. I don't. I don't think the. I don't think the palate and the finish can jive well with what I get on the nose. Yeah. Right. Like two different things. Matt, Definitely what do you think? Like the nose better. Yeah, I. I think I got to echo what everyone's saying. The nose was really quite pleasant. The palate for me just didn't. Wasn't complete enough. Not yeah. enough finish. Just like kind of falls. Falls through. Not saying this is bad. Uh, I agree. But. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a bad bourbon. It's just not. I think it's a young bourbon to me. I don't know. Do you guys think it's young or not? Am I, I'm, you know, I'm guessing probably it's four years. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking when I say young, I'm yeah. thinking like four. Like it's not a. It's not because a. Eight. Marcus used to drink in the 18 year old. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> sipping on that 20 year old Jack Daniels or Jack Daniels 20 year old Jim Beam. Beam when you guys showed up. But yeah, whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, but no, I'm gonna say. Not Jack Daniels on the first round, Chad. So, all right. Well, <clears throat> stick around for round three. <laughs> but I'll give my thoughts on the palate. I know, I know we I chatted yeah. a little bit in the beginning, so we're probably at that, you did right good at that Lord, minute. dude. The hey. fanny pack, bro. Man, yeah. the fanny pack. Uh, I do echo what everyone's saying on the palate as far as a little bit grainy, uh, a little bit thin, short, uh, which is weird. I'm sitting here looking at the oils dripping down, but mm-hmm. it's not a lot. 
honestly, like with people, I don't know if they'll show up on camera. When you hear oils, like something sticking to the glass, usually it's a big ring. It's it's really thick. This is just kind of like, that's the thickest part of dripping. Everything else is just kind of there. I thought the nose and the palate were similar. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? It gets the job done. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> and we're back, folks. <laughs> uh, I've missed you guys. <laughs> I thought the nose and the palate were similar. Like to Matt's point, though, a weeder, um, the profile like does make sense because it is a little grainy, bready, um, gotcha. fruit forward. Yeah. And usually with weeders, like bread and yeah. fruit are my two Probably big do. notes for all wheat bourbons. Um, so I, I think everyone's qu- quite in line with the same idea of of profile here. Uh, but I am sad to say, like this, it, like I hate that the finish on this is so short, just because it. I expect a little bit more. That's what she said. Okay. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's the job done. Now, Chad, is this something like from your regular... Oh, we can't talk about it. Can't talk. Oh, can't talk. Can't, hey, about round it three. Man. We can. Okay. All right, guys. We, we are actually at the end of round one, so yeah. unless you guys have Thanks other... Thanks for sticking around for Chad's genius, uh, cruise uh, Chad's details. cruise notes, Chad's... Birthday show. Fanny pack. Fanny Chad's pack. Back. Uh, uh, yeah, birthday. Yeah, I almost got arrested from pooping off the guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's a great story. Cool story, bro. Yeah, appreciate that. All right, so let's let's take a quick break. Get a word from our sponsors. Fucking sock on this guy. <laughs> we'll be back with more with the Bourbon Life crew in just a minute. Three Chords line of whiskeys embody the spirit of creativity. The whiskey is a true collaboration between producer and composer Neil Giraldo and master blender distiller Ari Sussman. The Three Chord team of expert blenders, coopers, and sensory professionals have developed a multi-step process they call perfectly tuned taste. This process begins by carefully selecting the finest bourbon and rye whiskeys from Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana, and then blending them together. Find out more about the whiskeys and distribution in your area at www.threechordbourbon.com. Welcome to Old Dominic Distillery, a family-owned craft distillery nestled in the heart of downtown Memphis. Founded by descendants of Domenico Canali, a pioneering Sicilian immigrant who made Memphis his home in the late 1800s, Old Dominic is steeped in history and tradition. Old Dominic prides itself on offering a diverse selection of whiskeys to satisfy every taste. Whether you're a seasoned connoisseur or a curious newcomer, you'll find something to love, including an 85 proof Tennessee whiskey, bonded Tennessee whiskey, a single barrel Tennessee whiskey, a 90.1 proof bourbon, and coming this fall, a cask strength bourbon. Each bottle of Old Dominic whiskey is crafted with care, featuring unique mash bills that offer a variety of high and low proofs. This dedication to quality ensures there's a perfect pour for every whiskey enthusiast. Old Dominic whiskeys are proudly distributed in several states, including Tennessee, Kentucky, Missouri, Georgia, Arkansas, Illinois, and Mississippi. Can't find us locally? No problem. You can conveniently purchase our products online and have them delivered straight to your doorstep. Ready to explore the world of Old Dominic? Visit our website at olddominic.com to learn more about our history, discover our products, and find a retailer near you. All right, everybody, welcome back for round two of the Bourbon Life podcast. I'm your host, Mark, and with me here tonight in Bourbon Life Studios, it is my... But we are the Bourbon Life podcast presented by... I haven't even Liquor to that Barn. Point. Wow. Did, you yes. missed it on the first round, too. Yeah, wow. you did. Yeah. Okay. Dun, dun, yes. dun. We're the Liquor... <laughs> <laughs> We're the Liquor Barn podcast brought to you by the Bourbon Life. We're the Bourbon Life podcast presented by Liquor Barn. Thank you, Liquor Barn, for your sponsorship. We cannot bring you this show... This awesome, wonderful show like this that we're doing. Why are you saying that so condescending? I wasn't. I was like putting my radio voice into it. So, but uh, we appreciate their support. We appreciate the support of all of our sponsors. But I am Mark, the host of the Bourbon Life podcast. And with me tonight here live in the Bourbon Life studios, otherwise known as my basement, uh, are my friends, Chad. Chad, cracking a top on that. Champagne of beers don't over you, there, man. Don't you get that on the table? Yeah. Nope. Nope. What's up? I'm a man. Hey, uh, what's going on? <laughs> Not much, man. Are you sure so, that fanny pack says otherwise? Hey, <laughs> hey Mark, Mark wears fishnet. So. Oh, he, I, he did wear fishnet. Did wear I fishnet. never wore fishnet, guys. Never. But his ears double pierced. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, Stacy. Maniac. How do you want with the ears? Don't worry. Brother. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even rip it? I great. didn't want to go all the way. She, what that's, about the fish? That's what, that's what, that's oh. what he said. <laughs> I didn't want to rip, like Mark said he was going to wear these fishnets uh, later. So. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, Matt, how are you doing, man? Uh, Mark, I'm doing great. I would just like to bring to everyone's attention. Please do something. Yeah. In in season one of the Bourbon Life podcast, this is something I've noted since I've been around since season one. Um, I haven't left you yet, Mark. Thank you, Matt. We appreciate but, your time. Andy. But yeah. we appreciate were, you. 
we were your hosts, Mark yes. and Matt. Now it's I'm your host, Mark, and this is my friend, Matt. No, that's not <laughs> true. And, and that that's started, some straight bullshit. That, that started probably around season 1.25. <laughs> Damn. No way. Damn. Matt, Damn. Since, yeah. Yeah. Matt so, is a host, just the same as I am Thunderdome. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm, Matt, I'm, do you want to start your own show? No, no, wow. I, I don't. I'm Mark, your co-host, and my other no, no, co-host, no, 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 Matt, no, no, no. is at the good. end of the table. It's wow. all good. There's an 80s ballad somewhere that's about to start up with the sadness of Mark feeling bad. Yeah, no doubt about it. I'm going to think about that. I mean, I've just been crying in the corner. Matt, the I'm so three. sorry. His eyes I, are I, a little glassy. Than, I, never, I never meant to make you feel that way, so I'm so sorry. With me is my co-host, Matt. I'm your co-host, Mark, and we are equals <laughs> in the Bourbon Life podcast. So thank you for being here, Matt. You made yourself like sit a certain way to say that. Like you were trying very hard, like to put. Man. Anyway, Philip, how are you doing? You know we're on video. I'm, I'm, done, doing I'm done with this. Philip, you're just a friend. <laughs> so so you say yeah. he's I'm, just I'm, a friend. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to the Bourbon Life, to Chad, um, Four Roses, Heaven Hill, Michter's, New Riff, Wilderness Trail, um, Liquor Barn, and um, Jay Mattingly. For my daughter's conference, those are the distilleries. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, man. Donated and uh, very nice. Yeah, Jay Mattingly, awesome. they did a one of one special blend bottle. So. Nice. Tell everybody. This is we're talking about. Tell yeah. everybody. Oh, what hell, that I was, feel man. bad because you know yeah. what I meant to bring you today. That's at home. Samples. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a douche. Yeah. Thanks, Chad. <clears throat> yeah. So nothing. Um, my daughter has a genetic syndrome called Wolf Hirschhorn syndrome, also called 4P minus, and so we had the national conference in Louisville this last week. Uh, and it was a success. We had a great time. But awesome, man. All of you all and all of the distilleries and liquor barn went above and beyond and awesome. really helped us out. And we yeah, ended up man. raising nine thousand dollars off this silent auction item. So hell yeah, very yeah. cool. So well, we're thank happy you all. happy to sponsor that man. Be one of the sponsors. Yeah. For that, Philip. So happy happy to do that as a as a father of a son with special needs. Obviously, I mean, I, I understand. So yeah, man, happy to do that. Yeah, for sure. Awesome, man. So this round, we've got another uh, something or other poured up. Chad, is there anything? Another you can, one. You can tell us <laughs> anything about what we're, anything at all? Is there anything? It may or may not be Jack Damien. It yeah, may, that's a, it that's it about, may or may not be. And this might be the most boring episode for some people to hear. Uh, I feel like the banter off mic that we've had is probably better off mic, but. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, we're just not going to share with you guys. Yeah. That's, that's fair. But, yeah. yeah. That's we're fair. getting ready to go exclusively to Spotify. Yeah, exactly. Right. Pay us. We're going to do, a, we're going to start a Patreon. So if you guys want to get that, yeah, if you want to get a podcast content, at all, with that's us right. On it, if but, you want to get that exclusive content, subscribe uh, to our Patreon. But I'm just kidding. We don't have, well, I do have a Patreon, but. Oh, oh, you have a Patreon? He the does. Bourbon Life has the a Patreon. The Bourbon Life has a Patreon. The host has a Patreon. Pa- yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's what is, no friends what's allowed. What's on this Patreon? There's nothing. There's nothing on there. Hmm, interesting. There's a Patreon, but there's There's nothing. someone fish who's nuts. paid for it, though. Yeah. Fishnets. Wow. No, there's no fishnets. God bless. Chad, just <laughs> please go on. <laughs> hey, shot through the heart, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're to blame. Yeah. You give bourbon a bad name. Go well, ahead. That's uh, that is not me. So speaking of bourbon, Mark, what you got over there on the nose? Let's get. I don't into know. The nose I, don't, yeah. I don't have anything on the nose on this. Come one. on, I just, Marcus. I just sniffed it for the first time. Let's that's go, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my first time. Oh wow! But again, I mean, this one this one smells very grain forward to me. I don't get like a like a lot of stuff off of it. It almost smells like. You know, I've said this before. Like, does it pencil- smell like Jack Daniels? It does not smell like Jack Daniels. Though. Pencil shavings. I get the pencil shavings. It smells like pencil shavings, and I, I haven't said shavings. that in a while. But it's like, it's like that that Ticonderoga number two or whatever the pencils are, man. It's like, you know, the flex Mark has when he's confident about how to say a word. You know, like the smile oh, he gets. Monongahela. Yeah. Monongahela. 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 <laughs> That is not that hard of a word to say, man. Monongahela. Mon- Monongahela number two. We <laughs> and, sharpened it. Oh my God. And the pencils are Ticonderogas. That's not that hard. That's Ticon- the old Worcestershire <laughs> pencil. Right now, man. I, like the, I like the little bit of like accidental inflection you get, like Ticonderoga. Ticonderoga. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I'm from Eastern Kentucky. Did you know, you know, no, no, yeah. Bingo. 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 Yeah. I finally got it. Bingo. <laughs> Shit. Damn, I should have done bingo for this. He for ain't this Kentucky. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I am Kentucky. Um. But yes, uh, pencil shavings, right? That stands out to me, number one. It smells like Dollar General number two. There you go. Pencil it does. Over in Grayson, mm-hmm. Kentucky. I think no, in Carter County. Dollar General hashtag seven is what those are. I get a little cinnamon <laughs> off of it. Uh, but honestly, there's not a whole lot that, that jumps out to me. 
no, like I'm looking for like fruitiness and stuff like that. I'm just not, I'm not picking it out. So maybe it's not set long enough, but I don't get much else off of that pencil shaving. I'm getting the pencil shavings. I do get a little hint of cherry. Do you? Okay. I know it. I'm starting to wonder if this is not the same brand as the last one. The last one? Just a little different variation. Stacy, what do you get? He brought a bunch of Blantons for us, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he brought Blantons, like Blantons, yeah. I, like, I did have a guy tell me yesterday, happy birthday, I missed when you only did 30 days of Blantons. And I'm like, I did it once. That's not only what I did was, it once. That was, it was awesome. 28 days. Days. That was awesome, yeah. Well, it needs to be 31 for January tomorrow. Next yes, week. Ooh, that's yes. true. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I got to bring it back. Bring um, it back. Stacy, back. back to you. Um, I would agree. The nose is a little flat on this one. Um. I'm not really getting a whole lot that comes across. I was getting like a slight hint of like artificial, like banana ish mm, okay. vibes coming off, but now I'm not really getting that anymore. So maybe it's the high life. I don't know. Could be. <laughs> Matt, you're working it over. Look at him. He's he, oh, all right. Can I just tell you, Danny Kahn told someone asked him today on the barrel pick, does it make a difference if you switch sides? And he's like, no. He's like, it goes to the same receptors. It doesn't matter which side of your nostrils. You suck it up into it. It does if you have a deviated septum. He just said it goes to the same it receptors. Does. I'm just he says, I, I mean, in, all, uh, in the best way, but Danny does have a big nose. So I mean, oh. that's a little, little bit of a Sazerac beef with him uh, and Freddie. Uh, that's Freddie, what I told yeah, him. I said, yeah. I said, Freddie Johnson was the one that taught Matt and I that on the show. He said, well, I mean, if Freddie, if Freddie says it, then okay. But yeah, he was pretty adamant that no, you're not. I mean, it is the olfactory nerve that processes all that, correct? Yes, but it, but the olfactory nerve is not like divided between your nostrils. Correct, but that's okay. that's what I'm saying. There's science there. Yeah, I mean, and Danny is a science guy. I'm just True. telling you. But Matt, Danny is a big science nerd. Matt, Sorry, you're Matt, working back ahead. and forth. But what do you what do you pick up, Matt? Tell us what you I'm get, man. Like kind of wondering if we've all got the same thing here because I'm not getting pencil shavings. I this is to me like big and bright. Oh, it's really fruity. I'm getting like a lot of grape, like sweet grape must, almost like a sweet wine, like a dessert wine note on it. Um, there's like a fair little bit of oak. Okay. Like some really nice bright notes to it. A little bit of grain. Uh, Mark, you had sent this somewhat grain forward. Yeah. Chad, what'd you do behind that curtain? Um, hey. I'm getting communion crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I love it. Like that's I love I communion call. crackers, man. If I could just like put a whole bowl of that, I just... I mean, you, know, you can buy packs of them, right? I know. I, right. Yeah. Love them. Packs of Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Back to you, Matt. What do you get? He just, he anything just told he said. He just told anything you. else right. besides Philip. anything else though? Uh, I no, I I think it to me it's it's bright. Not like uh certain I wouldn't again call this a higher proof, or if so, I think it's done well, so there's not any ethanol. Uh doesn't smell super old. Not gonna say this is like eight plus. At least I don't think there's enough barrel influence to make it that. It's a little lighter in color too. Yeah. Um, so you know, kind of proof maybe similar to what we were on the first one, where I was guessing somewhere in the ninety to one hundred five range. Maybe this is a touch step up from that. Maybe closer to like ninety eight, one hundred seven, somewhere in there. Okay. Phil, did we ask you? I'm sorry. No. Uh, no. <laughs> but after swirling it around in the glass, trying to open it up a little bit, I am starting to get a little more caramel. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you I, think it's Jack I'm getting Daniels? a little bit of that banana now too. Hey, uh, wait, wait till oh. he's done, Mark. He said he got banana, and then I said, "Do you think it's Jack Daniels?" Yeah. Hey, objection. Uh, to be perfectly <laughs> honest, I don't know if I've ever even drank Jack Daniels. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, maybe once in high school. I don't think but I've don't ever remember. sat and like sniffed yeah, Jack I've never Daniels sat though. Those I don't think anyone has. I don't think I don't think anyone at Jack Daniels has been like, "Hey, do you know what Jack smells like?" No. I have. I have sniffed it and smelled it because for the master of bourbon then exam, why that was the one of the hell are you asking us? I'm just asking what you guys think. I'm just telling you, this does not smell like regular Jack Daniels to me. Regular Jack Daniels. It doesn't smell like barrel, barrel proof Jack Daniels either, because I'm not that familiar with the nose on that. I've had it, but the regular Jack Daniels has a distinct aroma to me that this does not meet. Um, now, if it's a finished Jack Daniels, obviously it's going to be a little different. But even even still, I I would think that the, the underlining underlying you know tones would come out, and I don't, I don't get that on this at all. 
I'll catch you on in a second. My contact lens just fall, fell out. I was like, okay, Matt. Matt's, Matt's done. Matt's leaving the show. Hey, today, All right. Today I learned that Matt wears Finally. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Now we're to the core of the real bourbon fans here. Yeah. So. You know, yes. as the uh, as the great Chinese proverb says, it's about damn time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. So I'll give what I get on the nose on this. Um, I do get pencil good. shavings, but I also get a lot of like stone fruit, like light peach, okay, honey, apricot, tea. I get the caramel, like the rich caramel that um, Philip was getting. Do get some grain. Um, I get a little bit of an astringency on the nose. Yeah. It's got a bite to it, like if you really stick your nose down there. But for me, oh, yeah. it's yeah. really like lemon, honey, peach tea is the big thing I get on the nose. Um, Shh, he's back. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. hey. Oh, hey, everybody. Oh, hey. hey, Matt's back. I will say that it the be nose cool, on Everybody it has cool. opened cool. up quite a bit since it's sat. I am getting the tea influence that you're speaking of now. Yeah, I'm still getting pencil shavings. But it's not like a black tea. It's more like a herbal, like a peach tea. So I, I just get like iced tea. You know, it's not sweet. I, I think I said sweet tea, but I just mean like iced tea. Like, you know, it's just like a generic Southern style tea with no sugar. So That's not li- Southern, then. Is that Hooters whiskey again? Damn it. I never got to have the Hooters whiskey. I didn't get to have it either, and I'm really bummed about it. If anybody out there has some, send a girl a sample. I was too busy working. You drank it all? Oh, yeah. She gone. (laughs) She gone. (laughs) Hell yeah, it's gone. It's all. How about Arby's? Anybody have any Arby's whiskey? No, I really wanted to try it, though. I had it in my basket, but it sold out. And it sold out. I tried. I did. Okay, so someone did bring me a sample of the Doritos vodka. Oh, I oh, had some of that. And it, I swear to God, if you, okay, when you first smell, if, if you hey, don't know. We know you love Doritos. Hey, I, I do. Doritos I love Doritos. Too. You know, only, only like you and three people at New Oh, man. But if you just smell that <laughs> shit and you're like, oh, it smells weird. But I swear, if you open up a bag of Doritos, it, it is like the vodka, it's distilled using the same corn that they use to make Doritos. The same, you know. Okay. So, and I. I don't know if it's true, but they said they actually like took some made, not seasoned Doritos and then crushed them down, made like a maceration out of it, and then also redistilled that or distilled that to make the the a portion of the vodka. Don't know if that's true or not, but it, they did use the same corn from Doritos. It smells and tastes like Doritos. It's honestly one of the weirdest. I've only got like a 50 mile shot. I, I'll have to see if my buddy will give me a, a bigger one for the next group episode because I swear it's to God, good. if you drink that and taste so a what, Dorito. But what would you do with it? You, it, it, would make it, a, it would make a great, like, fun shot. Or honestly, hey, if you put silence that, that damn phone, if you put that in like a Bloody Mary, oh, okay. See, I, I think that would really do be Bloody like, Mary. I don't know either, but I think that would be like for people who do like, you know, drinking Wayne. tomato juice and vodka uh, with it bad would, taste. It would, yeah, it would be okay. good. Yeah. You know? Because vodka sucks for the most point. Except right? for Doritos vodka. I actually will stand behind it, but wow. I thought it was really good. I, I hate to admit that I'm like, I like Doritos and I can drink Doritos. Okay. Well, well, if you say so, man, I'm. I will probably never give it a chance. You will you if I bring it to this show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean there are a few vodkas out there that I like, but they're a little, you know, higher end kind of like Belvedere. Like, uh, yeah, oh, like oh, they're higher end. Buffalo piss vodka. Yeah, he he likes. What's it. wrong with that? That's a delicious vodka, dude. The best uh, vodka I ever tried was actually Wilderness Trail, the Blue Heron. Was it really? I've never it had. I've never had, had it. Had Delicious. That. Yeah, it was really good. It actually has flavor. It's not just a flat. Yeah. It's it's yeah. their it's their rye mash bill, or it's their their high rye bourbon mash bill, isn't it? Uh, but I they just say not but they sure. they just distill at one ninety. Yeah, I'm not I sure, think. but it was actually good. I liked it. You could drink it and eat. Yeah, yeah. But yes, there is the buffalo piss. Uh, I can't remember what it's called from it's Poland. Got a, it's got a piece of grass. It's in got it a piece of grass that a buffalo peed on. Dude, it's delicious. I'm telling you, that is delicious. Fishnets, but, urine, whatever, right. man. I'm just telling you, it, it's awesome. You can drink that straight. It tastes like vanilla. It tastes like birthday cake. Tastes I mean, it really like does. Just what, and it's what not like additives. It is the vodka with the strand of grass in it. So I'm telling you, delicious. Anyway, what are they feeding those bison or buffalo? I, I have no idea, man. Birthday cake, <laughs> <laughs> cucumbers. I don't, man. I don't have no idea. I don't know asparagus, something, whatever. No. But, but the vodka, the vodka tastes really good. So, 
All right, guys, you want to jump over? You want to talk about the pout and the finish? Because we don't have like topics tonight. Like, hey, hey, you hey, guys we, have failed me. Some, no, we got some topics. time. We got some time. Uh, How much time do we have of, left? We got a lot of time. It's like only oh, we've got a long time. Yeah, okay, we got a yeah, long time. The Nick has got something here. Well, I was just going to say the news has actually been pretty slow in the bourbon world recently. Yeah. What the yeah. hell's going on? It's well, it, I, weirdly, it seems like things have like calmed down. Like the the only big news as of late was like you know Justin settled their lawsuit with the government with Kentucky. Yep. You know, the federal government kind of settled it, but. Um, state government kept pushing and pushing and pu- uh, pushing and pushing. They kept pushing. Uh, they kept pushing. Push it real uh, good. They were pushing they more were and pushing. more. And they have settled on that, uh, which I think is wild because there are so many other companies, or not companies, stores, business owners who are doing the same practices, but I feel like they were trying to make an example uh-huh. out of Justin's. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, especially yeah. people who, you know, I don't want to say... They didn't literally, but they figuratively pretty much helped write the vintage spirits law and like, you know, what that is for people and the tourism that they bring. Like the state was shooting itself in the foot by telling these high end multimillionaire people, hey, you cannot go to that store and buy whiskey that we can make tax revenue on because they didn't document 25 bottles. Yeah. 20, 25 bottles. This all really stemmed from just like Blanton's that Sazerac tried to say was counterfeit, even though it was from a licensed distributor from somewhere that was all legally documented, every portion of it, so it wasn't fake, but then 25 bottles. So yeah. that, to me, was a big thing. So that was settled just publicly announced a couple weeks ago, but um, they've known for a couple months now. But it, it really shocked me that the state just kind of like threw in the towel there. I was like, yeah, we can't do anything. Because there's yeah. so many, I mean, I mean, hell, there's a guy over at the mall who does it. Mm. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. you guys have bought a few bottles there from one of here. So, or somebody has, I'm sorry. Yeah, it wasn't me. Well, it wasn't you guys. Yeah, no. <clears throat> somebody, somebody I heard had purchased bottles there before. But another yeah. fun fact: I heard uh, a federal judge somewhere ruled that it's uh, the law to prevent home distilling. There, yeah, is so, um, uh, unconstitutional or something. They're so, tr- yeah, they're trying to change, trying to change it to where you can do like a limited amount of home. Really? Distilling. Yeah. There's like three. There's like a senator and two congressmen or something that are trying, or a, or a congressman, and senator, and a judge who are trying to change that you can distill at home now within a certain. Yeah, I was like gonna a, say, what's the limitations though? Yeah, I, I didn't see. I what, don't think they're. I think they're trying to set a press like say gotcha. you can, but it's it's wild to say that you can make beer at home, you can make wine at home, you can make brandy at home, you but can, you can't make. Yeah, alcohol. you can't you can't make distilled of course dist- distilled spirits. It, it's a different story, right? Because you, you're distilling it, right? Well, so the whole, I mean, the whole thing goes back to taxes, and, though. So that you know, like well, that's with, true too. So yeah. like they want your they want your tax revenue off of this off of distillation, but I mean, hell, you go to a like a legal marijuana state, you know, like certain you know, like certain states you can grow at home you know, yeah. without having to pay taxes on it. But if you grow over that amount, and the police bust you, you have to. They don't even seize it from you; you just pay taxes. Like pay taxes right. on what this yield is going. Like how many pounds or ounces is this going to? It's crazy for alcohol. You can make wine or beer at home and not pay taxes on it. Yeah, because the but only you, difference is you're running it through a steel. You're running yeah. it through a steel, right? You're wine and beer aren't as much yeah. fun. Do what? what? Said because wine and beer aren't as. It's much like fun. Danny They're Cohen not. said, people that make beer are quitters. If you go all the way, <laughs> Dude, yeah. he, he yeah. said that again today, yeah. man. It was if so you go funny. all the way. Yeah, it becomes liquor. He said that this uh, one of the guys there didn't had never heard him say that. No, and he he. he I feel uh, like that's like like it's on his name tag. It is like. I mean, for I want to get oh, like a motivational, you know, the motivational posters that they used to have like hanging up in like corporate offices. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Get He's Danny's Danny Con, like, yeah. looking at a yeah. glass of bourbon. Beer makers are quitters, right? Yeah. As yeah. from a guy who used to brew beer. Correct. Know, well, that's yeah. what, because right. Randy, yeah. it was Randy Prossy, because Randy was talking about Sierra uh, Nevada. Nevada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I was going to get a six pack and have you sign it for me and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, Danny said, you, well, you know what the problem with the, with uh, brewers are right so randy's like no what so you got the sheriff's joke which yes i mean it's always funny when when danny says i mean obviously we like beer so yeah i was gonna say i mean we're we're big even though it's miller the hey don't you talk shit about the high i wasn't talking shit about it it's the champagne of beers i was gonna bring bush light but i mean we had bush light uh, the last I was going to be one country, of the last episodes. I was going to be country boy, and I forgot to do that. Matt, you're awful quiet. He's like, I'm out of this conversation. Matt's like, I don't drink beer. He's yeah. he's like twisting his pen down there, and like dropping it on the table. Here's Matt, news. do we want to talk? Oh yeah, Whiskey House has bourbon now. They're distilling. They're up and running. That yes, that's awesome. right. Yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah, Dave Man, as of July first, right? Yeah, they are. They were they were what like running a month and a, a month and a half ahead of schedule. Yeah. So like, yeah. hashtag the Mandel land. effect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Man, 
<laughs> I tell you what, those guys are just like on it. I mean, it's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. So, yep. and they've signed deals with, um, and so you know, not to cause controversy, but I mean, they've taken so like, you know, like Lucky Seven has yeah. now moved from Bardstown. They are I know. a partner really? there. So like, you know, yeah. you're Lucky Seven. Which I wonder now. So I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah. So does that mean that like Ashley Barnes and I don't know if Monica's a part of that or not, but like the blending house, like Yeah. Um, but like so Lucky Seven now is exclusive exclusively at the Whiskey House distilling. And so I'm wondering if you're gonna see like EJ Curly transfer over. Uh-huh. I know. If you're when, gonna see, hold up, hold up. When did this happen? When did this go down? The very the like first, first yeah, the first one hundred barrels distilled was uh Lucky Seven yeah. at the whiskey house. Like uh-huh. that, that their whole thing was like, Hey, all, all of these barrels that we're distilling now are happy to have Lucky Seven as an exclusive partner yep. of yeah. and they've we had they, Dave and Johnny on. We tried a bunch of stuff that is going to like be like six or seven different yeah, things, right? I really like of, Lucky Seven. A bunch so of brands that will them. be distilled at Whiskey House. Mm-hmm. Whiskey Gypsy was one of those. Milama Green. That's right. Yep. Which yep. Is another one. Lucky yeah. Seven. Yep. What, what were the other ones? I can't remember, Matt, but good point. Uh, yeah, Milam and Green leaving BBC or BB Co., or whatever you want to call it, um, is, is wild to me because that, like, the whole idea of like them being Texas and Texas distilled and Kentucky distilled, and they were leveraging so hard. Like, Lucky Seven didn't really be like, yeah, Barstown Bourbon Company. Like, there's hey, great partners, but Milam and Green leaned so heavy into that that Barstown Bourbon um, partnership that the fact that they're moving to the Whiskey House, I I, I don't know, I find it shocking just because seeing what they put out and seeing how they're like Kentucky, Texas, um, I'm wondering how what they're going to do there because this is supposed to be like the the latest and greatest most state-of-the-art distillery in the united states right. that, yeah. that was getting ready to be my next question why do we think so many people well say so many why do we think people are making the jump is it because of the state of the art is it because they're cheaper is it because they're new and fresh on the scene i'm sure it's a mix of both um so like i know and i'm not going to say the number but i know if you went to barstown bourbon the minimum cost just in whiskey alone to, to go with t- today. If, if you went to them today and said, Hey, I want to join, here's the minimal. And it'd be green river distillate. You, it costs it. The green river distillate is cheaper than the Barstone bourbon company distillate. Um, <laughs> thank you, Chad. I was getting you, ready to do like, that. He's Chad's pounding, like a, pounding the pulpit. He's up like here. Khrushchev, man. He's like getting the shoe and going to start pounding on the desk. But, I say they probably worked a, either a a better deal at Whiskey House or the contract wasn't so like strenuous. But also, mm-hmm. uh, I always thought having like so when Bardstown acquired and Pritzker acquired Green River, the idea of if you go there and you've seen a lot, like you see a lot of these new brands coming out and they're like, hey, we use seventy twenty one nine. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with Green River whiskey. Right. Absolutely. No, I like love it. I really like Green. River. Absolutely love. I, I do too. And, um, but when you see a ton of that, or especially brands who were contracting with BBC, and now you're seeing more of that 70, 21, nine match will come over, um, and make, you know, so a couple of years ago, BBC cut their bottom 50% purchasers. So one, you know, uh, one of those clients is a brand in a nice fancy bottle who was also working with them and another distillery in Danville who are now signing on to deal with um, um, Potter Jane. They're going to exclusively go with Potter Jane, which would be Frank August. Right. So Frank August is moving to Potter Jane. Hmm. Um, But BBC did go through and cut quite a few accounts and customers because they weren't either, A, they they weren't purchasing enough or basically just it wasn't worth, you know, Bardstown's time. Sure. To devote yeah. that effort to them, if they were, if other people were like, we want more barrels, we want more bottling, which makes it, it's business, you know. It's, sure. Hey, they're owned by uh, an, an investment company, so if you're not going to give them time of day to get a good ROI, what's the point? So I get that, but maybe some of those customers who maybe seen the writing on the wall or were afraid they weren't going to, they got their contract cut. It might have, it could have been cut or could be cut soon, or they were just like, it's a cheaper deal or a better deal long term. So I, I think that could be why, because it's. What most people don't think about when it comes to bourbon is the the cost up front. And and like if you want to start a bourbon company today, if you don't have a million and a half dollars in your pocket, just don't even try. Like that's that's the bottom sure. line of what you're gonna to need to at least start a brand. Yeah. All right. So let's jump back to the whiskey. <laughs> what do you guys get? Philip. You wanna share oh Philip's take He's Matt. going back in. Drink. Matt, anybody? All right, Philip. Philip. 
Stacy. Nope. I need the, to... This palette is much better than the first one. Okay. I get a really good caramel, nutty. Yeah. A little bit of fruit, but in the proof is hitting. It, this is, I think, quite a bit higher. In proof higher proof. First one. Yeah, I'm thinking 115 to 120. Okay. Matt, what about you, man? Yeah, this is like peanut brittle, kind of yeah. s- spicy, sharp palate, warm, like Philip was saying, drinks warm, uh, like hot honey, spicy. Mm. Ooh, finish. that's a good. I like that. A, I like that. Stacy, you're just going to go with that? That was Mark's nickname in high school. <laughs> hot honey. Right. Hot honey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This would pair with some good hot chicken. Like oh, hot no, this chicken. would be great yeah. with that. Um, I got like caramel corn. Um, caramel. <laughs> fuck off. What were, Car- you, what were, what were, what were you Carl, saying earlier? C-A-R-L-M-E-L. Carl Mel. What were you saying earlier? Like, anyway, I anyway. can't remember. <laughs> It was something redneck as fuck, though. Anyway. <laughs> Push. Pushing. Well, I ain't pushing. <laughs> this tastes like caramel corn to me. Um, I don't know. I got caramel corn, and then when he was talking about hot honey, I could totally see that there is a lot more proof on this one for sure. I like the palate on this one way better. I like the palate better, and it, I like the palate better than the nose. Again, the yeah, nose. Yeah, it's like flip-flopped. It is. I mean, it's, it's so weird because the nose on the other one was good. I thought the palate was not this one, the nose was like, eh, kind of a miss. What do you think the proof is on this one? Uh, I think it's, I, I mean, I guess this one to be about 100. And I'm guessing this is probably in that 107 to 110 or more. I'd agree with that. Range. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what you said. So, Chad. So comparing one and two, um, I, I think number one's more balanced for me between nose and palate. Um, hit my hat on the microphone. Whoa. Uh I quite enjoy number one, but number number two, the nose, kind of flat. Um, much worse than I remember, uh, especially. <laughs> but the palate on it, nice. um, I was very surprised by. You know, yeah. uh, sweet, fruity, really good spice notes. Um, the hot honey is good because it, it is like a cayenne, like a chili heat. Mm. You know, it's not the flavor, but the heat is there. Um, <clears throat> But it's not too overpowering. Though. It's not it's pretty it's, well balanced. It's got some good viscous. It's creamy. Yeah. So like the cornbread notes really like the uh, Stacy said the cornbread's coming through really good. I the last time I drank this, I remember being somewhat underwhelmed. It's but, not Jack Daniels. But maybe it's com- not Jack Daniels. Comparing it to something else made me realize how actually much how much better I actually enjoy it. Um, but no, I do. Do enjoy this. The only thing I don't like about the palette is I find it the finish to be a little flat. Like I, I enjoy the finish on number one. I think it's exactly what I want the finish to be. On this one, it's like trajectories up, finish yeah. drops. Huh. And it's like mm. I get nothing on the finish. Okay. Really? Going back and nosing one and two beside each other, I'm getting some brown foreman vibes. Are you? Okay. On the Ooh. No, on which on which one? Uh both of them, but more so the first one. Same. Okay. Could see that. Interesting. Like some old forester. Uh, is number two a high? Well, never mind. We're, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about it in round three, which is going to be coming up soon after we take a break and get a word from our sponsors. So everybody, sit tight. We'll be right back with more with the Bourbon Life crew in just a minute. James E. Pepper Barrel Proof Decanter Bourbon, distilled at the historic Pepper Distillery (DSP KY5) in Lexington, Kentucky. This new release, bottled in a striking recreated distillery decanter from the 1940s, has garnered high praise and accolades. Coming in at number 27 on Fred Minnick's Top 100 Whiskeys of 2023, it received a 94-point rating and was called absolutely delicious with notes of delicate hazelnut and toffee. Aster Wines, one of New York's most prestigious retailers, writes, The whiskeys coming of age now are some of the finest from any American whiskey producer. This bourbon is arguably the most impressive you will find at this age. Available nationwide with a suggested retail price of $65. Learn more at jamesepepper.com. The Stave Restaurant is a bourbon lover's paradise right here in the heart of bourbon country. Located at 5711 McCracken Pike in Millville, Kentucky, between Castle and Key and Woodford Reserve, Chef Kyle Klatka prepares amazing food each day that features an elevated Kentucky-inspired cuisine. With a full-service bar, great bourbon flights, and signature cocktails, the Stave is the perfect place to catch up with friends after a fun-filled day of touring the local distilleries. Be sure to check them out online at thestavekentucky.com 
or at Instagram and Facebook at The State of Kentucky. All right, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back for the third and happily final round of the Bourbon Life Podcast. I am your co-host, Mark. And with me here tonight, live in the Bourbon... Oh, no, wait. I'm your co-host, Sean. We are balanced and fair here on the Bourbon Life Podcast. <laughs> and with me here, live tonight in the Bourbon Life Podcast studios, is my co-host, Matt. Matt, how are you doing in there, man? Mark, I'm great. It's good to be back around the table with the crew. I think... Uh, our banter offline has been, we probably spent more time oh, talking offline than we have here recording online. So always Luckily good. for you guys. Good yeah. to have the crew back. I got to say, I've been missing these episodes. This is what happens when we don't see each other regularly in, in our, even our group chat's been kind of like the Our lately. group chat has so sucked lately, guys. What's I feel like happened? all the off air stuff that Matt's talking about is because we've not. No, I agree. We just I agree. We haven't, haven't been busting each other's balls in the group chat. I agree with that. It's it, the you chat's been Mark has balls to bust. <laughs> <laughs> the chat's the chat's been quiet. I wish I wish Chad would be quiet, but the chat <laughs> the chat's been quiet. Yes, it has been, and we've not done a we've not done an episode in a while. So, mm-hmm. and that's probably my scheduling fault. So I'll, I will work mm-hmm. on that. He did to, that on purpose. Yeah, maybe, but Matt, I'm so thrilled that you are my co-host. And I'm your co-host on this show. Happy to be here. The fact that he's making an exerted effort to so say it. Now it just sounds weird. Yeah. I, shouldn't it's not, have it's not I shouldn't have brought it up. Yeah, I, I wish, every, yeah. Yeah. every week, yeah. every week I'm here as the co-host of the Bourbon Life Podcast like, you know, I, with my I co-host swept this Matt. under the rug so many years ago. At least, ago, Matt, I, when I introduce you to people, like when I tell people, I'm like, yeah, Matt's on the second largest co-host. Or Matt is the co-host on the second largest bourbon podcast. So I give you that credit, Matt. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Just anyway, Philip's here. Oh, wait, no. Stacy, we didn't start with you. Yeah. Fuck you, Philip. What's up? Sorry, what? I, I did him first, that. and then I did. It's okay. No, Stacy. I'm Hi. throwing it to you. Hello. Hi, America. How are you? <laughs> wow. I like America's listening to this. Wait, did you say hi, America, or hi, I'm Erica? Hi, America. Yeah. Hi, America. Hi, America. That's what she said. America. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm Erica. Yeah. Hi, I'm Erica. Anyway, yes. Chad's here too. Chad, what's up? I am here. No yes. one gives a shit. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Philip, how what? are you? I'm living my best life. Over you here. are, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Philip, Philip oh, gets, yeah. Philip gets his dressed for the own occasion. side of the table, right. man. Yeah. Philip has his own. Yeah. How much did you spend on that polo? He didn't. I didn't. My wife bought it for me. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. How much did she spend on that ever. polo? I don't know. I saw it online and my cousin was like, check this out. From the Roosevelt's company. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure how much it is. It's very comfortable, though. Very comfortable. I highly recommend Roosevelt's. It looks like like that nice, like breathable golf, you know. uh, Totally would rock that on a golf course. Yeah, John Daly would wear that. (laughs) Yeah, he would. That's my boy. (laughs) The legend. Smoking a cigarette, big beard, drinking a beer. Yeah. Hey, when can we do a Bourbon Life podcast golf scramble? Never. Come on, just us. Golf. Just us. Come on, Mark. I, yeah. I thought play you around. played golf, right? No, yeah, I remember, remember you, you bought, bought clubs. clubs. Wow, come on, you bought anyway. a bag. All right, boys, let's, let's do make, it. Let's make him commit. You bought a drone, you bought a bike, you bought tennis shoes. You know. Come on, let's do it. We all suck. It'll be so much fun. And we could take like a GoPro with us. You're allowed to drink on the golf course, or the or the we could take a drone. I can fly the drone. Yes, let's do this. It'll be great. Anyway, who's in? All right, we yeah. can do that. We can I, arrange that. Turns out we just all go to Top Golf. Hey, <laughs> that would even that. be fun. There's not. A, it's yeah, in Louisville. Uh, Louisville, yeah. Yeah. Hey. and there's one in. And I know somebody's got an RV that can drive our asses. <laughs> <over there>. <laughs> <laughs> Great, that'll be fun. Yeah, thanks for volunteering, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Hey, no, hey, no sober driver. Hey, yeah. this yeah. is the Bourbon Life RV. That's right. Road trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mark sober. No. We should do an episode of the Bourbon Life crew in your driveway with with the with RV. the with the RV. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. We could we could figure that out. I'm for, sure. For the next There's not year. a lot of room in there Let's, though for five people. Psh, hey, we could listen, make it work. You know I'm just what? We're all close here. With cameras <laughs> and everything, it'd be difficult. I'm just saying. I feel like Stacy and I shared a camera for like the first year and a half. You guys you guys are very close. Yeah. Yeah. So. It would be like true Blair Witch style, like just mount the camera <laughs> yeah. right now so in front of you. Like, like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Matt, how do that you feel? Work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> Mark's driving. <laughs> I guess it's a great idea. Yeah, it, MTV Fear Style. Anyway, yeah. Chad, tell us what we're doing this round so we can so, finish this show up. <laughs> I don't know why you hate this so damn much. But I don't hate like, it. I love it. I mean, you're drinking stuff that you don't know what it is, and you get to decide. You can just Look be honest. The you like it or don't. color, man. Look at I mean, that. So yeah, this, is, this, this is, is totally Jack Daniel. This is the third round of is it Jack or is it yeah, not I'm, Jack? I'm thinking he's like held out, but I'm like, yeah, go ahead. 
So like I was saying, uh, <laughs> this is the third round of is it Jack or is it not Jack? And so you guys get to tell me whether you think you are or are not drinking Jack. You don't so, know Jack. For the last two rounds, you guys have said not Jack, right? Everyone consensus? Yes. First two rounds. I'm uh, starting to. I, I know. Now I'm, I'm questioning. I'm starting to question it. Yeah. I'm glad I saved a little bit of E. Yeah. Here. That's well, yeah. And like I said, if you either save it, I could report it. I but feel like yeah. you're playing mind games with us. He'll be like, ha ha, all of these are Basil Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> no, Matt would know that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That would See, when you when you pitched this to me, Chad, I thought it was going to be a different take. I thought you were going to going to pour three drinks, three bourbons or rice or whatever that had something in common, be it same distillery, same mash bill, oh. same proof, and we were going to have to try to guess what the similarity no. was between. No, he said, no, screw when, you. <clears throat> so, like, that's what I was telling. That so when I pitched this. I pitched it out like thinking out loud, talking to Matt. And I said, I would love to do this. You know, I bought these bottles. Mark says, I hate that. I don't want to do that. And I, you know, I said, we're going to do that. <laughs> Final say. Like, <laughs> you will on. eat your vegetables, Mark, and you yeah. will like it. <laughs> yes. There you, you know. go. Right. Uh, it's not my podcast. But not no, anymore. it's your, you it's and our your podcast. It's our yeah. podcast. Damn right it is. That's Just, right. I'm uh, not a 1% steak. <laughs> 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 I, Ooh, steak. Anyway, go I ahead. had steak last night. It's good. Um, <laughs> you, you say steak. <laughs> say steak. Oh, cakes and pies. Cakes. He had it right out of his fanny pack. Anyway, yeah. Uh, my my. So I'm glad that you didn't understand what I was saying because I was saying it could. It, everything could be Jack. Not, nothing could be Jack. One could be Jack. Two could be, like my idea was just. That's why I said in the, our group chat. So it's kind of like a Jack off. Yeah, it's a Jack off. <laughs> yeah. So we're all here I've trying been to figure out if it's Jack. For wow. it the entire time. <laughs> wow. Damn it. Wow. Yeah. So it's, nice. it's either you know Matt, Matt, Philip, Stacy, Mark. You know you got to figure out is it Jack me off. You know so. Yeah. All right. So what about this Hard first? What next. about this uh, third four? Anybody have Matt? Definitely darker in color. Definitely darker. <laughs> definitely. Nose, definitely not. Nosing. True. What definitely. do you What do you get, Matt? Nosing wise. Uh, go to someone else. I haven't really stuck. This I haven't either. I haven't either. Philip. Sorry, been talking. Philip's the only one I've seen knows it. <laughs> got a mature nose i'll jump yeah, in here i'll, I'll it's give definitely give yeah. Philip. i get none of, i'm gonna say this is a beam product i'm gonna mm -hmm. i'm just gonna go out on a limb so since on, we're all jumping in i get like a vintagey like an oxidized brown sugary note on mm. this okay yeah i'm saying this is like an older beam product of some form do, do i get we? a little nuttiness i get a little i can see, just, I can see the nuttiness yeah I get the nuttiness i get that sweetness uh it's a it's very just beam ask to me. I don't, I'm not saying it's a Knob Creek or something because I think the proof on this is a little bit higher than 100 proof. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it, maybe it's a single barrel or a barrel pick of something uh, that's in that 12, 13 year old range. So it's got that older whiskey, the older bourbon notes to it, the nuttiness, the sweetness. Uh, I'm I'm thinking this is. It smells like a Knob Creek pick that I have at home. That's what I'm saying. I think it's I think it's a Knob Creek, an older Knob older not a 15 year old but i dig i dig the nose a lot all right so so what do you think philip this definitely stands out but over the other the other two way, right uh, way over not this a, is, this is not the not same a jack brand. daniels this is not a jack Daniels. no this is not the same brand yeah matt Whew. I just took a, <laughs> just took a, a sip. this is hot yeah i gotta open this my, is, I my sinuses so yeah okay. all right this uh I, so i guess i've kind of forewent the nose here but I echo those Damn. kind of vintage notes on it. It almost, to me, tastes like maybe an older whiskey that could have like a toasted influence to it. Maybe some sort of like a secondary mm, okay. barrel to add some older flavors as well. Um, but uh, we'll get to the palate, but whoo, I'm awake. Yeah. How, did you get that off of the nose though? Did yes. Did you get the proof off the nose? Uh, yeah, I think this is a, a step up. Stacy, what do you think? Anything I would else? agree with that. Um, like I said, it gave Give very much Knob Creek. <laughs> <laughs> you all right over there? It gave me very much like old Knob Creek pick vibes to okay. me. Um, definitely higher proof than what we've been drinking. And I mean, <clears throat> that color. I'm going to say this is a Booker's. That's what I was getting ready to say. You think gonna, so? Or gonna, maybe gonna, a little book, but probably book. I'm going to say it's a Booker's. It's a high proof. It's a, it's a nicely. Yeah. I'm going to say this is a Booker's. I'm going to say for sure this is not Jack Daniels. No, it's not Jack Daniels. But the funny thing was, because Philip, you'd said something. You're like, you said something about Ophel, right? 
And yeah. I'm like, shit. He said Brown Foreman. Brown Foreman. But then okay, said, I'm sorry. But, but then I yeah. said, especially oh, four star. Right. First one. Right. Yeah. So on which so one obviously, specifically? The first one. So the obviously, first one? yes. So obviously, Jack Daniels is owned by Brown Foreman, yeah. right? Correct. So I went back before we started third round. Second one, man, I'm still getting all that grain off of it. Uh, but I went back to the first one, and like within an instant, it was like banana. That was the first thing I got. Was like on the first one or the second? The first one, one okay. was like imitation banana. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking. See, this first going back one. to the first one for me, I get like a lot of like, it's, a, it's like a super sweet, like almost like van, like vanilla milkshake, melted vanilla, I get soft, that too. soft brown sugar, and a little floral. The banana, yeah. like, I get banana on the second one more. So. I, yeah, Do you I get, really? I get, I get banana. banana on the second one. See, I, I don't. That's what I was about to say is I get banana on number two. Um, I do. Too. I, just, I don't get. I, any, like, I still like, get the not pencil the shavings. Like. Uh, Originally, I got like artificial, like runts banana okay. on the second one, but now that it's sat a little bit, it's, 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 it's like it's like banana, banana like bread smoothie. or like yeah. yeah, banana bread's good. Yeah, banana bread like banana pudding ish vibes. Matt, have you gone back to the other the first two? What yeah. do you think? I uh, banana pudding came to mind for me That's on the good. second one. On number two, yeah, okay. kind of like vanilla wafer banana pudding. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, on the nose or or taste on the palate. On the, palate. the first one to me is still drinking. Um, a little thin, still kind of has that weeded uh, palate to me. Like I'm still getting kind of like cracker, cherry, gotcha, toast, wheat note. Um, I too, like Philip was saying earlier, I don't think I've ever actually had just Jack Daniels. Okay. So, um, and I think only one or two times in my life have I had like a single barrel or a barrel strength Jack Daniels. So. I don't know if I would be one to be able to even pick it out. Gotcha. On this one. Same. So. That's why I think that this but, episode was a good idea. I'm saying this is Jack Daniels. But that Brown Which one? Foreman. Number the one. first yeah, one? That, number one that is Jack Brown Daniels. Foreman it's not regular. Knows, it's yeah. not Jack Daniels Black Label. And it, uh, a, the finish on it is. Pretty, number, number one's like. Short, medium. Finish. Yes, like but there's, there's, it's, it's a different release of Jack Daniels. But this is, mm -hmm. I, to me, this is core Jack Daniels. That's been something has been done to it in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um. But that's that's number one's Jack Daniels. Number two is not. Number three is not. Number three. I'm still thinking. I'm I'm still saying Booker's. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just my number two is grain forward. Too. It's number yeah. two is so grain forward. There's no way that's Jack Daniels. It d Jack Daniels just doesn't have. I don't think it has I can't that. Wait to find out what number three. Uh, so this only would matter to Matt. Um, hmm. Now you know if Mark wanted to drive drive the RV with Stacy and Philip in it to wow. to Divine Spirits. Uh, number three really reminds me of a particular barrel that we are fans of. Um, so I'm not saying it is that, but like it's got those same qualities of like the super dark oaky tobacco notes. Yeah, um, that I'm I'm getting on there, um, which I will I will say nothing that I've poured is a rare character product. So yep. it is not what I'm talking about is uh, a barrel that Matt jokes about that I like to show off to everybody, um, which he likes to. But it mm -hmm. is not that. But it reminds me of that that barrel. Yeah, I'm just saying that just clings to the glass. I mean, it's just like. <clears throat> so every time I do this, I will say, I always try to bring something like last time I did this, it was with the Woodford Barrel Proof where everyone thought it was Willet, which is funny because yeah. a, a lot of the Willet stuff was Brown Foreman um, from, you know, in that age range. But um, it seems that, it seems there's a theme. I, I feel like I'm ghosting around Brown Foreman stuff, but I don't mean to. And I'm Old Forester's biggest critic too, so. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say that I don't think this is Brown Foreman number three. I mean, I, I'm sticking with the whole beam thing. I'm the same bookers. The, the proof on it's high. Um, it's like a barrel proof. She is hot bourbon, I think. So, and I don't think it's the last release of bookers. <clears throat> no, I don't, think I, it's, love I don't that. think it's number two. Yeah. Right. I've the, not had the last 24 two. I haven't, I've not had it. Uh, oh, I got so it upstairs. Good. Let's, We'll hit oh. that after the show. Okay. We can, yeah. we can compare well, that to my. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Yeah. I'm always offering the bourbons that I have here. Sometimes, guys. Hey, to share. Don't you throw that? I in. still have that 18 year old Heaven save, Hill save that tip. nobody's ever opened with me. So the I mean, oh, the 18 yeah, well, year, so 18 year old o Heaven Hill. 
we can open that at the end of this show. Let's open it because you, we, Matt and I decided we should save to open that. Oh when, yeah, I remember when that. Philip and yeah. Stacey were here because you offered to right. open that with exactly us. Exactly right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you're like, we, no. we yeah. thought you would waste you it on us. Waited? So yeah, yes, we did. After yeah, we, we didn't open after we do the reveal, yeah. Philip, they do like go us. a few minutes extra. We'll open that and do a quick review of that because yes, we that's made fine, a, we made I'm, a point, Matt and I did, that we wanted to wait for Philip and Stacey before we tasted it. So. Okay, that's fine. We can do that because I was like. I've never opened it. I put it in a back room. It's like oh, sitting in there well, open. So so let's we because yeah we've we I forgot all about that. So I feel selfish for doing all three rounds to me. Why no uh, no? This has been a fun show. I mean, well, I mean, our listeners may think otherwise. <laughs> other, like, They'll otherwise, get out of it. right? It's fine. So, oh, God. Yeah. Uh, uh, so is do you want to do the reveal? Huh? I don't, so, you want to talk about the palette to finish on this one before we do the we already, reveal? Well, we kind of we kind of did. We kind of mixed it together. Okay. Yeah. So let's. I'll, I'll I'll close my like final thoughts out with, um, so f- number three for me got I, the same as the nose, dusty brown sugary, heavy oak tobacco, a lot of like cherry, um, yeah. high proof. Yeah. So I'll grab the backpack of wares huh. and yeah, man. show off. I can see number three is a hot, so I'm just going to interject before we get in there. Number three is like a, a hot weeder. A hot weeder. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can any, see. Any thoughts as to what it might be? Uh, hot weener. Uh, Hot wieners. <laughs> yeah. Um, Happy birthday. Matt finally had some carbs today. He ate some wheat bread. Now it's stuck in his breath. I know. It's like everything, <laughs> everything Matt tastes is like, Carbola. fuck yeah. It's, yeah. it's wheat. It's a wheat bread. It's wheat I've bread. never seen Matt eat a carb. I will say that. <laughs> I have once. He just does I'm gels honest. when he's he running. Did. It's I, just I, gels. Did you he watch shoot, him destroy cake? He shoots a gel. I wasn't here for that whenever the cake your cake was on here. I wasn't here. I was. Yeah, you left. You were waiting for her pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. She's mad. Anyway, no, go ahead. All right. Chad, let's do this. So I'll, I'll grab the backpack of specialties and curiosities and I'll reveal these. Yeah, yeah. So, wait, is one of them Jack Daniels? What do we think? Hey, I, I told you Mark, number one's Mark, Jack Daniels. Mark said number, he thinks number one's number Jack one Daniels. Is a I'm going to say number one. Number, one's, number one's Jack Daniels. Matt, what do you think? Is, do you think any. Any of these, yes or no, are Jack Daniels. Again, I don't know Jack Daniels. I don't know Jack. But uh, <laughs> hey, but if you were going to jack off one of them. Yeah. That's right. If, uh, oh, wow. Hmm. I get knocked down, then I get jacked off again. So <laughs> I could almost. I get, I hey, could man, almost, just take off your pants and jack it. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, Blink-182. <laughs> yeah. Hey. That's right, man. Hey. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I could maybe make a case for like any of them. Maybe... Number three could be like a super high proof Jack Daniels single barrel. Uh, number one is just is unique. So could that be Jack like some foreign Jack Daniels export possibly? Number two, another one that's kind of unique has we were kind of calling out like chasing those banana type notes. Could it be like some old Jack like dustier old? Jack Daniels product. I'm gonna. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just gonna buck the trend. I'll say two. Number two. Ooh. Jack Daniels. Okay. okay. I'm All gonna right. say so f- one is a international Jack Daniels release geared towards Scotch drinkers. Oh, Philip. Oh. That's a very, 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 yeah, direct, man. very yeah, niche. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. That's man. what I think it's. If you're okay. gonna hang your hat, hang yeah. your hat. Go, go all yeah, in. Yeah. Number two. Number two. Do you think it's a barrel pick? I think it's. Oh, Jack Daniels bourbon. Do you really? You think two of them are Jack Daniels? I'm going to go with these two are, and this is a Jim Beam product. All right. So Mark thinks number one is Jack. Yeah. Do you have any guesses about these? Jack uh, or no Jack or? No Jack uh, Beam product. No right. Jack for you. So one, Mark one, thinks one number is... one's Jack. Uh, Phil thinks one and two are Jack. I think one Matt is think, Jack. So Stacey thinks one's Jack. Matt thinks two's Jack. All right. So we've got them all. That's but it, man. Those are cast. All right. Shit. Now he's going to come uh, back and have like three bottles of Jack. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's all actually the this same is gonna be, thing. Number three is going to be like the fucking single barrel barrel proof. And I'm going to be like, damn it. I bet you. Hey, right. but you know what? If it is, I'm going to start pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I love single barrel barrel proof, but uh, I don't remember man, it tasting like that. He's got a cheesy so, grin over there. I know, dude. He's going to kill us, right? I'm so excited. Everything's super cheesy. Right, I'll start with number one first or three first. One. Number one. one. Number one. Let's go in order. I don't my headphones on. So I know, I know how loud I'm yelling. Hey, right. man, so <laughs> number, <laughs> number one is sweet and toasty 107 <laughs> Jack Daniels OG. So, nice. Uh, or sweet and oaky. So okay. this is actually just 107 proof Jack. 
Nothing. It's not toasted. Nothing crazy done to it. It is just a 500 ml. Okay. It is a export. nice looking bottle, though. It is um, cute. I was off on the proof, but like I said, I said so 100 proof. So I was the, off on the yeah, proof. 107 yeah, it drinks proof. a little softer than 107. It drank way yeah. softer than So for them, the taste, they print this on the bottle. Taste is caramel, vanilla, toasted oak, concentrated at mid palate balance of sweet oak grape. Great mixer. Finish is creamy and clean. Aroma, balanced character, sweet oaky, medium body. I think I think that kind of lines up with what we sure. all said. Like nothing wrong, so. short finish, right? Very, very, uh, very I would basic. Worry about this standing up though as a mixer because the finish was so short. I think the proof will carry it through. True. Yeah, I think so. True. That one oh seven proof. I bet every single one of these is JK. This motherfucker. Number two, Barrel Vantage. Oh, oh there yeah. you go. Nice uh, man. Barrel right. Vantage, a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys finished in Mizunara French and toasted American oak. So it's a blend of uh, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Okay. So there is some Jack Daniels in there. See, it was Tennessee. <laughs> uh, there, I don't think that's Jack Daniels. There is some like 15 or 18 year Dickel in this. Dickel. One. I can't remember. Mm. Um, so one, I didn't get the... Uh, one fourteen. You didn't get any Dickel, did you? didn't get any of the Dickel. <laughs> yeah. Dickel Story so of your I life, did, isn't it, Stacey? I, <laughs> well, my... Ah, uh, anyway. I did get this like weird orange marmalade note, um, which like even though I knew these like but when I reviewed this, I also got that note, this orange marmalade that I always get from Dickel products. I didn't say that because I don't want people to be led to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause I don't know if anyone else gets that. So I don't get Flintstone. I didn't get the Flintstone at all. I was I didn't either. So we couldn't afford Flintstone vitamins. So we just had, um, you know, great value vitamins, which were <laughs> unflavored. So I don't now know. that you mention it, great value did stand out in that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number three is a Jack Daniels barrel proof single barrel. Oh, oh that's what, hell. Uh, yeah, man. That's, that's like, it freaking at, awesome. Yeah. 133.5 okay. proof. This was actually. No a, way. I was going to guess 133.4. Were you really? Legitimately. Yeah. Before you pulled it out of the box, <laughs> I was dude. thinking 133.4. So this is a. So bottling date. I picked this. So this was bottled um, in 2017. So this is an old pick that Shit. I've had around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but. So I picked a barrel at Total Wine in 2021 with them, and it really reminded me. So this was like the barrel that I'm like, it has to taste like this because this tastes so That's old, really so good. dusty. Uh, it, it does, so man. I've What's been, the age? Do you know? Uh, so the one I picked was a six and a half year. I don't know what the age on this is, but this, this bottle is from 2017. So mm -hmm. I've been sitting on this for a long time. Um, Nice, but I, I assume tasting similar. It's probably around a five or six year old age, but one thirty three point five. So what did I say when you went over there? I'm like, the third one is probably a fucking single barrel barrel proof pick. Um, but I mean, yeah, man. I mean, because that's the only that's the only Jack Daniels that I will drink, and it does. It reminds me of Beam. Drinking yeah. this reminds me of a Beam product, a aged Beam so product, man. This, this bottle's been so open, good. like it it has. I mean, in seven years, you see yeah, how much I've drank because yeah. I love this bottle so much. Um, it's so it's so wildly good. It is just awesome, ridiculous, but yeah. uh, it's it's delicious, it, absolutely delicious. It doesn't taste like Jack Daniels. No, not no, at all. No, it, it does not. And that's so been one good. of my biggest things with this. So, like the the two barrels I ever picked Damn. with Jack Daniels for their single barrel barrel proof, I was like, I don't want it to taste like. So this was right. like, it has to taste like this, um, which. Mine came in. I never got any of mine. They all came in a little proof too, but um, this has been like my pinnacle of the for me the best Jack Daniels product ever. Compared, you know, ten years, yeah. twelve years, fourteen or whatever they right. they have now. But um, yeah, so one thirty three point five. So two out of the three were Jack Daniels. Um, yeah, should have known. Well, thanks for sharing that, one, especially the last one, one, man. Thanks for sharing what that. Is a, what is one of those retail at? Like a single barrel. Um, so here in Kentucky, so I mean, fifty to sixty bucks. Yeah, I mean, they're oh, not yeah. that, they're so not that I, expensive. I, I used to, uh, so I used to tell people. Um, so I, I've burned through quite a few Jack. I would tell people, you're looking for Stag Junior. Yeah. So for that. this, for me, that dusty brown sugar, yeah. a lot of cherry, a lot of cherry syrup, medicinal. A lot of oak, tobacco, vanilla, creamy, creme brulee notes, um, some like waffle batter and stuff. So like Matt talking about weeded on these, I always get a lot of like wheat heavy grain notes, even though there's no wheat in Jack Daniels. For people looking for uh, like Stag Jr. and E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof and that kind of stuff, the closest thing to that for me or a like Weller Full Proof, Jack Daniels Barrel Proof Single Barrel can take on, like if we blinded this against like well, a foolproof Taylor Barrel proof. I think that would be Stag Junior. Yeah. This tastes like all three of those combined. Oh, yeah, it's delicious, that, man. And, and yeah, I don't know the age on these, but like you know, 
I think they're about six year age average. Um, but way more affordable than all way of more the affordable other and oh, findable. Yeah. So fifty yeah, yeah. to sixty, even seventy bucks. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to like Stag Junior, like I see them, like if I um, if I see a Stag Junior, just because I'm using that for a high proof, just because they're high proof. Uh, if I see that for a hundred bucks, I'm passing on that. It's just, to me, it's not worth it. Right. It's just not worth it. Seventy seventy five is kind of where I cap out. It's not worth the extra twenty five bucks for you know, an uh, you know a non age dated product. Uh, but for fifty to sixty bucks. These are, oh, I yeah. are solid. And if you're a rye fan, they're the single barrel rye. Oh, single barrel rye are great. If you like Bookers. So yep. I mean, you thought this was oh, Bookers. Yeah. You thought the, it was yeah, Bookers. Yeah. Bookers. Yeah. Exactly like, right. Yeah. It does have a nuttiness to it. It does have that oak tannin, bitter brown sugar note. Yep. I think this hits so many people's palates correctly, not knowing what it is. For me, the first time I tried a Jack Daniels Barrel Proof, I thought it was a dusty pirate bottle Elijah Craig, like a 12-year. Uh, that makes uh, sense. Uh, yeah. I was just going to say, because it, it has a lot of those Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah. Uh, it, type of so fun, older. You, you would know. He would. I would know. He's got does. Like he was around bottles. when they caught yeah. the yeast. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is. That's the yeast. not where I was going. I don't oh, like wow. it. Oh wow. Yeah. But they just yeah. scraped it off my body. So <laughs> <laughs> instead of scraping barnacles, they scrape the yeast. <laughs> I thought this would be fun to show off. You know the yeah, the variety of stuff. So like you know this we talked about when I bought it. You know we talked yes, about this. Yeah. Uh, like, right. that's, the I nose on that one was so awesome. Though. It yeah, is, and this is Great. for thirty five dollars. I feel like this is well worth thirty five. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. Um, Absolutely. Sure. But just once again going back to Jack Daniels Singular Barrel Proof. It's uh, you know Great. hidden gem, hit and miss. No or doubt, not yeah. not a, it's not a hit and miss whiskey or bourbon. It's a hidden gem that I feel like every time you grab one you. It's gonna be enjoyable for you know mm -hmm. fifty sixty. And I mean that's my joke on Instagram is that I hate Jack Daniels, but I like Jack Daniels barrel proof. I yeah. like you the always barrel, say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, single barrel, you can barrel say barrel you like Jack Daniels now too. Uh, well, this is a different I expression. A, I was not a super fan of that one, mm, but I you just, like the nose. I picked it. I did like the nose. You the seemed palette. like you liked but, it, but the that third one, yeah. I, I mean, I was the third one. I was like. Yeah, you had me. I thought it was Booker. I was like, this is 130 this plus one, proof, man. The so. barrel vantage, though, really threw me off, though. Yeah, no doubt. All right, guys, we're at the end of the show. So any final thoughts before we wrap? Chad, thank you for doing yeah, that. Though. that do you want to go extend it and do the 18-year? Yeah, well, tell him to come back for an extra 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can if you guys want to. It's, so, it's up to you if you want to open it. Matt's like, that. God, I just want to get out of here. Matt's like, I got to be up at 4 a.m. to go swim I got, 30 I gotta, miles. I got to swim like four miles, man. So. I'll do it. Are you sure? Yeah. 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 If Matt's doing it, we got to right. do it. Come on. Bonus. Well, let's, how bonus about we feature. end this round? I mean, we'd actually do a bonus episode. We'll come back for a bonus, bonus, bonus round. Come back yeah. for a bonus round. Is I've been right? asking for like two years for Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right. Everybody sit tight. Hang out with us. We'll be back with more with the Bourbon Life crew in just a minute. Welcome to the kitchen table at James B. Beam Distilling Company, where every visit is a celebration of tradition and flavor. Did you know that the kitchen table is nestled right within the heart of the distillery? That's right. You can experience the essence of James B. Beam's legacy while savoring their delectable dishes. Join them every Wednesday through Sunday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. for a culinary journey like no other. Planning a special event? Let the kitchen table be your host, creating unforgettable memories for you and your guests. And don't miss their exclusive Behind the Beam Tour and monthly Claremont Supper Club events, which will feature Baker's 13 at the August 15th event. For more information and reservations, visit BeamDistilling.com. The Kitchen Table at James B. Beam Distilling Company. Come as a friend, leave as family. All right, everybody, welcome back to the bonus round of this week's episode of the Bourbon Life Podcast. I'm your co-host, Mark. <laughs> and with me here in the Bourbon Life Studios is, is my co-host, Matt. Matt, how you doing, man? I'm good, Mark. How are you? <laughs> Thanks great, for having man. us back for an extra round. Yeah, We've man, been talking yeah. about it for four and a half years. We're finally doing We're finally it. We're bringing do it. it to the people. Bringing a bonus round just for everybody, right? So, mm -hmm. Philip, how are you doing over there, man? I'm doing great. I got one question for the bonus round. <laughs> What's that? How much did you pay to have them deliver that chicken salad sandwich at Baker <laughs> Mart? Live on the podcast. <laughs> that was a freebie, man. He brought it over there. I'm just telling you. That was not planned. That, that just He just showed up with that. Because they know I love chicken salad sandwiches, right? And then you just dropped five bills on pours of pappy That's and true. btac yeah. for us all hey you know what you guys hey, hey tax write off matthew tax it, it was, hey still it's got to come out of someone's pocket did we have a we good time or not we did. i mean we did i right. don't know because i wasn't there oh that's right Stacey you weren't there busy. I, I forgot i looked at you stacy because you weren't there but yes we and we had a great time we had, I had a great time we drank you know, some great whiskey we did right? mm -hmm. we, yeah. did they bring you guys chicken salad sandwiches absolutely not. <laughs> no but we had like six pours of whiskey that i didn't pay for so i don't give a shit yeah yeah you know but their sandwiches at liquor barn are 
Yes, yes they, are. they are. Yes. And we are the Bourbon Life Podcast presented by Liquor Barn. True. Very yes. true. Yes. We appreciate them and all mm-hmm. of our sponsors. So, Matt, how are you doing? Did I already ask you? Yeah, I think we're working our way around the table. All right. Stacey, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's up I'm, with you? You know what, Mark? I'm You're great, here. but I would be better if I had a chicken salad sandwich. Yeah. Look. Actually, you know what? Yeah, that makes one of them. Actually, their Reuben is my favorite. Mm. Mm, The Reuben is good. Reuben's good. My fave. It is. The day of the pepper, at least I had that. It was really good. Really good. Chad, how are you, man? No one cares. Uh, I'm good. Maybe I not. like turkey sandwiches. Um, you oh, they have turkey so Swiss. They turkey do, whatever, yeah, man. Yeah. Turkey. Basic so, ass uh, bitch. I am. I'm not a big fan of chicken salad, so um, I have standards. But oh, uh, yeah. okay. Says so the guy that eats turkey. <laughs> <laughs> do you eat bologna? I have standards. No, I don't eat bologna. I have standards. What kind yeah. of um, country kid are you? I was, Check poor. Out the I was poor, but I wasn't that poor. Mark, have, um, you, had, have you had the chicken salad chick in Louisville? They're uh, here, here, here in Lexington. Oh, yeah. There was one in Lexington. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's one yes. at Brandon Crossing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've had some of their stuff. Oh, so. that's right. I've, I've been there. Their, uh, their yeah. jalapeno one is. Chad, show everybody your box, man. I never thought you'd That's ask. Patreon. Hey. Uh, so, Marcus. So, we've been talking about, and I've been asking for an extra round, an extra special, and even some guests, some distilleries you guys have talked to have been wanting to do an extra fourth round. Yep. Guess what we won today? I'm glad that you never let another distillery do a fourth round. So the you know for the listeners, owe it to the crew, right? You do. You owe it to us, and now you can let distillers do that Patreon content. But um, we are drinking. Thank to you, um, the Heaven or Have in Hill. Have in Hill. Uh, Hill. It does annoy me that they split the the word Heaven up. Oh yeah. Um, But the Heaven Hill Heritage Collection, 18 year Kentucky straight bourbon with. Even even hill, even hill, even hill. Uh, so distilled at DSP KY one and bottled by DSP KY three one. So this was distilled in Louisville at the now Evan Williams Collection Distillery, bottled by Heaven Hill in Bardstown. Beautiful bottle, beautiful mm-hmm. bottle. It's nice, you know, very, very, very well known bottle. Uh, yeah, love the labeling on it. Love, I mean, it looks good. What's yeah. the proof on that? 120 proof. Man. 120. Ah, holy damn. shit. Let's go. Does, it get, does it list mash bill or do we know? It does actually. Right HH Reg. HH Reg. 78 corn, 10 rye, 12, 12 malted, malted barley. <laughs> my malted barley. I remember man. my first beer. Shut up. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still working on my first beer. That's not here. your first one. <laughs> it is. But anyway, yeah. So that's the mash bill. Um, HH Reg. Yeah. That's what they call it. Right. So. Beautiful bottle, man. Love the love the boot. Yeah. Boot. So this is the mash bill of what, like the Heaven Hill bond to bond. Like it, it's your, it's it, their HH it's red. Everything, everything Heaven Hill. Okay. It's yeah. everything yeah. not a rye or a wheat whiskey. Right. This is your yep. Heaven Hill. Your yep. McKenna's. Your Evan Williams. They your, use this for yeah. every pretty much every every blend or, or not every. Connor blend. likes to say HH reg, but H-H it's H-H-Reg. it's it's literally quite literally just like the mash their only mash yeah. bill. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. And this is a small batch, so it's not a single barrel, right? So they they've obviously. Back. But eighteen years, so minimum, eighteen year old minimum, yeah. eighteen minimum years. eighteen years. Yeah, right. Eighteen so, years. So there's potentially older, and I don't know what other. I don't know what they do. Do you know anything? Have you heard? Well, I know the, the barrels are. What's what's the, the one was last year seventeen? It was like seventeen, nineteen, and twenty year. Yeah. So and that that was like at one hundred eighteen proof. So I don't know if this is the sim, a similar blend, but last the last one they did, you know, being like three different age ranges, was you know fantastic. Um, so going minimum eighteen year here. Whether it's cash strength or proof down to 120, regardless, it doesn't nose like 120. Yeah, not getting not getting that high proof ethanol corn on the nose for me at all. Do get a little bit of that peanut brittle, um, like we talked about previous round with the Jack Daniels, but that dusty oh, I just spilled some. Um, God, do you need the dusty peanut? brown sugar? Some of that oxidized wood, uh, very nice like creme brulee. Um, thank you. Uh, Can't believe you spilled that. Um, <laughs> That's a ten dollar spill, no doubt. But, man. Uh, and this does say the Rickhouse site. It's actually Bernheim. Oh, okay, hmm. so nice. that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That makes right? a lot of sense. So, so you, Heaven Hill fans out there, right? Like this is a Bernheim, uh, T T I. Is there no seven? So Heaven Hill purchased seven Bernheim in nineteen ninety nine. So, um, so you take eight. It's twenty twenty four. So you take eighteen years away. Yeah. What do you get? Uh, 2006, 2003. I don't do math, so just go ahead. Yeah, same. <laughs> Holy shit! I'm drunk. What are you talking? So about? I, 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 don't I don't know where you're going. Assuming this was actually bottled, uh, was it actually bottled last year? Uh, this says production date. Well, it says production dates 12 29 2005.
25. All right, so still 20. So yeah, 18, it would have so been bottled last been, year. Yeah, it would have been bottled youngest, youngest barrel would have been bottled last year. Yeah. So yeah, um, 2005. So yeah, this so Heaven Hill had owned this distillery for six years, distilling it uh, in Bernheim and Louisville. It's now the Evan, Evan Williams experience. Um, so we're, you know, we're talking some some fancy shit here on the old Bernheim distillery uh, equipment. Aged there as well with their mash bill. Um, so after the fire, Jim Beam gave them their yeast. So you do get that little bit of nuttiness yeah, that, to it. Yeah, yeah. So you, you get that Jim Beam. A lot like, of people don't. Re- I was telling some guys today in Bardstown, we're talking about that. They're like, they did what? I'm like, yeah, man, Heaven Hill burned down. And yeah, they, and Jim Beam gave them yeah. their yeast. Yeah, They're so, like, what? They did what? I'm like, yeah. I mean, yeah, Brown Foreman up. stood up, gave them distilling, you yeah. know, still time. Jim Beam gave them still time. Jim Beam gave them yeast. So they could be propagating again. Um, so, Which do you think that would happen in current day and time? I uh, I do. I think it was still because it was such a catastrophe. I yeah. mean, we're talking an entire brand and history gone. Yeah, I don't, like we're talking yeah. shit like ninety four, ninety five, and yeah. earlier gone because it was ninety six, right? Yeah, it was ninety six. Ninety six yeah. was the fire, and they they founded Heaven Hill in thirty five. Uh, oh. So the Shapiro, Shapiro brothers, right? So it's been around for sixty some years at that point. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think I still think the brands would do that. I, think I would hope so. I think they would. Was curious. So, what do you guys pick up? Other things, Chad? Uh, I mean, I, I kind of went um, without without being asked, but <laughs> yeah, that's uh, all right. You, so, you were. That's why I was like, yeah, just so, continue, man. So for the nose, yeah, t- tons of that tobacco, brown sugar, a little bit of dusty, oxidized, musty oak. Um, the tobacco is really, really prep prominent for me. Cause it reminds me of like tobacco barn. Um, someone told me today, Rick house is a really good note to use instead of that. Cause most people don't know tobacco barn. They know Rick house. So you get oh, like but dirt, tobacco, must, mold. But tobacco the, barn and Rick house smell different. To yes, me. they do. Different. But, they but different. Rick house is something that most people can be acquainted with. I know tobacco barn cause I helped hang tobacco and I played music in tobacco sure, barn. Right. Uh, but if you ever visit Peerless, Peerless is an old tobacco. Look, skin flu doesn't count. So yeah. <laughs> skin flu doesn't count. It does not count. <laughs> You're he right. was proficient. He was first chair skin flute. Okay. That's what I heard. So yeah, I, I was an all county skin flute player. Um, <laughs> Bet you were in Moorhead. In Moorhead. <laughs> That's right. The whole county. <laughs> Tri Around, County. Rowan yeah. County. Rowan County. They don't know how to say the A. It's actually Rowan or Rowan. Rowan. But uh, Rowan. I actually went to high school in Ohio, so the Moorhead jokes oh, uh, oh, don't, don't land. Guess what? Um, you ain't Kentucky, are you? Yeah. Uh, I was born in Maysville. Okay. So, ha ha. You still like ain't like, yeah. um, Still, my well, yeah. math is still math. That's me. Stacey, what do you get? What do you get, Stacey? No well, one cares. All right, Philip. <laughs> oh, oh, bam. You know, I'm going to stick by my tobacco barn. Yeah. Because I'm that, not from Ohio. That, Philip, the go tobacco on. barn is definitely there. The peanut of classic Heaven Hill is there, but it's very subtle. Yeah. The, like the age is almost pushing out that peanut flavor or the peanut nose. Do you think it noses at 120? No. I don't. No, it does not know no, on the nose. I don't it does not nose like yeah. 120 at all. No, I would say close. like bottled and bonded. Bottom, I was going to say 100, like 100, 100 proof. Ish. Yes. I mean, I'd say I'd say like 98 to 105. Matt, yeah, what do you think, man? I agree. I think it shows really good restraint for being an 18 Ooh, yeah. year product oh, at 120 yeah. proof. Yeah. It would be yeah. really easy for this to take over and go like too far in one direction to go too far in the oak and suddenly you're just like smelling all these harsh wood aromas and like way overboard on the oak and the toast it could go too far in like the cherry notes and the fruit and yeah. like the other notes you might get off of yeah. that it could go like too hard into the alcohol at 120 proof but i think it strikes a really nice balance to me there's some of the fruit there is those there are those nutty aromas that we're talking about there's that light dusting of like toasted oak, kind of almost like a musty, mossy oak type flavor. Makes me think that this could be barrels from both like a top floor and a bottom floor. Getting yes. kind of some oh, of those gotcha. like funky yeah, gotcha. bottom yeah. floor rickhouse type notes where musty you get wood like, versus, yeah, more that yeah, like yeah, top weird, wet, mossy, strong, moldy yeah. almost wood. Where yeah. that like top floor brings like those those good barrel notes and kind of that that harshness that like nose chew almost if you can think of it that sure. way or like really strikes there so i think it hits a, a really good balance on that because i've even had younger heaven hill products that i feel were a little were out of balance yeah no this is um, delicious and i, I think yeah it's really even got nice. like a refreshing kind of citrusy mm-hmm. you get all of the old age to it but there's still a light a lightness to it yeah, like a, a lightness like, to like it, yeah. yeah i agree 
So, I mean, this is our bonus round, so we're not going to jump into another topic. So let's talk about palate and finish. So, Stacy, what do you get? Palette, it hits all the notes for me. I, it matches the the nose on it a lot. I feel like um, I get a lot of like the dusty influences to it without it being too musty, too overpowering. Finish is well rounded, coats the whole tongue. Yeah, it does. Um, and it's not too oily or viscous, but it's not too thin. I'll just say that. Sounds good, Chad. What do you think, man? I agree with the um, the viscosity of it. It's a hefty. It's got some weight. It's a weighty whiskey. A lot of modern day Heaven Hill stuff is very thin, um, which I think you know a lot of people talk about how you know the peanut brittle, the peanut notes, it's sharp or what astringent. Uh, I think it's due due to the fact that a lot of the stuff is you know what you're tasting is mostly bottom floor. Um, this, like Matt said, I think it's a good balance of a mixture between top floor, bottom floor, those musty, weird, wet barrels you get on the bottom floor versus some of those heavy oak drier barrels on the top. Um, it's quintessential heaven Hill in the sense of everything of getting a little peanut brittle, a little cherry, a little brown sugar, oak, tobacco, leather. Um, yep. it's got a really rich sweet vanilla cream. I think it's probably one of the best heaven Hill products I've tried as of late. And that's even going against the, you know, so 18 years old is nothing to turn your nose up at. Like that's, that's sure. wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I've said in the past, and talked about like that 13 year, which was Bernheim distilled um, wheat bourbon. Uh, I would put this up there as that. And like the Bernheim was a 10 out of 10. That old Fitzgerald 13 year was a 10 out of 10 for me. I'd put this up there as a 10 out of 10. Like this is one of those, like it's a perfect bourbon for me. It doesn't drink 120. It is 120. It's got good tannins, it's good spice, good, good mouthfeel, good finish. There's nothing I dislike about this product. I agree. And 10 out of 10 is one of those things where it's like, I don't, I really give something a 9.9 or 9.7 just to like suck it up to it. But this hits everything. It's got the dusty qualities, the modern qualities and everything in between. And it, it's just, you could, you could sit and drink the whole bottle over a weekend or you could sit and think about it for a month. You sure. Know? Yeah. Or you could put it in the back room and wait till your friends. <clears> and wait till your friends wanna, come over and then you want to drink it. Right? Oh, yeah. And have yeah. a bonus episode. Exactly right. right. Yeah. So Phil, what do you think? <clears throat> for me, it's like a kind of a roller coaster ride. On the front of the palate, it was bright and light, kind of citrusy. And then, as you're as you're swallowing it back, then you start getting the tannins and the oak and yeah. those aged flavors. So I think it's a like they said a good balance. But it, on my palate, it was like starting bright and fresh, and then getting into the oak as you're swallowing it down. Uh oh, what's wrong? It's splashing. Uh oh, he's still going. Yeah, we're, we're still good. we're still good, man. We're still Matt. Good. What about you, man? Uh, I got to echo what Philip said. I think the palate on this is more of like a full experience. Like to me, it started with like a little bit of spice, a little bit of like the barrel influence. Then it just builds. Like yeah, suddenly the palate gets warmer, and spicier, and more of like the barrel comes along until you finally like it hits back palate. You get the warmth from the finish. Some of the rye spice comes through. A little peppercorn. I almost got like a little bit of mint there's like it mm-hmm. it kind of freshens up on the palate too but the whole thing just like builds from front of the palate like tip of the tongue to the the very end of the finish it's just a very complete complete drink i think it drinks hotter though you you're saying it doesn't really i don't think it oh, does yeah. i think it does i think the nose is very subtle i think it drinks as hot as it i think it drinks at 120 proof i i disagree I, okay that's fine i'm the heaven hill expert though you. <laughs> <laughs> Only Heaven Hill barrel proof. Yeah, you don't I mean, get outside of that range. You don't know it, it, it could be barrel proof, man. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. that's true. No, I, but I really enjoy it. Yeah, no, this is delicious. Great. I'm glad great. I waited. I'm glad I have to share this with you hey, guys. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah. And thanks for letting us do a bonus round. That's what I'm here for. So, any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Finally, hey, thanks for having us all back together. I know that. Thanks for being you here. Know, finally, after Stacey. The ab- after the abuse starts, that no. you start yeah. to question I your leave. thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. But thanks for being here. You can leave here. at any time. Thanks for being here. Finally. Yeah. You're Coming welcome. back. You're welcome. Yeah. Philip. I'll go show you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be back. We need to do it sooner. Yeah, yeah I agree, man. It's a blast. But you, you love the abuse. I do. You're like an. It's like a and group and therapy like, session. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel yeah, it. Quite like his favorite Metallica album. Marcus. Super into S and M. No, oh, wow! You kids, yeah. get off my lawn, man. Get off my table. Chad, final thoughts, man. Uh, big fan of this. Thank you for opening it. Um, thank you for you know waiting um, for all of us to be together. Absolutely, man. Oh, hell yeah! Oh, also, um, thanks for sharing all your stuff, 
Chad. Yeah, yes. no, yeah, thanks, no, Chad. no, no need to thank yeah, me. I enjoyed uh, that. It was yeah, good that was to cool. not. That you know, was fun. I've I've only had a bottle for seven years to share with people. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I appreciate so you doing that. Mark's had one for seven months. That's but, right. <laughs> um, no, thank you for like quite literally. Uh, was it two months ago, Matt? That we were doing this, and we said we should wait for it to open this. So two months ago, Mark or Matt's waited. Mark's waited two months. Yeah. Uh, for this bottle, I've waited two months for this bottle, and fantastic thank you i can't appreciate you enough yeah. um thank you to all sponsors for every time it is morning or night we appreciate you for listening to us <laughs> wait that's we mad. are no, the bourbon life you podcast no 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 <laughs> thank no. you for listening no. to the extra inning kill us that Mike. we are for man uh this episode um wow we've ran over for everybody we i, yeah. I appreciate you i appreciate you um i've had fun mark philip stacy matt uh, it's good to be around the table with everyone again hopefully next month we can do the same with having everyone here it, it sucks missing out um, mm -hmm. every month this is one thing I look forward to and as, as I tell Matt I was very excited for this today um, so this is something that I really enjoy and uh, yeah once again can't appreciate you guys enough awesome so, man yeah. Yeah. Matt, let's keep doing the blonde Matt my co-host my wonderful co-host yeah. down there Matt any final thoughts on your co-hosting position down there it's always great to get everyone back together again uh, I know our listeners like these shows for as chaotic as they can be so thank you all Sorry, for everybody for sticking with us morning noon or night as chad always likes to say thanks for getting <laughs> your, bourbon, your bourbon life fix uh mark thanks for hosting us as always yeah man yeah. happy to do it guys so we are the bourbon life podcast presented by liquor barn uh me and my wonderful co-host matt here weekly I never bringing, brought you, it up. Yeah. bringing you the wonderful bourbon life podcast we enjoy doing this thank you guys for being here tonight this means a lot to me i appreciate it uh, I've missed doing these shows and, and it's just, uh, I don't know. It's just a lot of fun, man. So you guys, you young whippersnappers give me shit, but you keep me young and I appreciate that. Cause we I didn't need... give you any shit on air. Yeah, I know, but, <laughs> but I, I still, I need it and I deserve it and I appreciate it. So it keeps me young at heart. So I appreciate that. Some great bourbons, Chad. Thank you so much for bringing. Uh, oh, thank you all for letting me do this. I had fun. Yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, blinding. more blinds. Let's yeah. do yeah. more blinds. I think the crew episodes need to be blinds. Yeah, Those I think it was a lot of fun. That was that was yeah. really cool. So thanks for doing that, Chad, very much so. So, uh, again, we are the Bourbon Life Podcast presented by Liquor Barn. We appreciate their support. We appreciate the support of all of our sponsors, everything they do for us. We couldn't bring you guys this show every week without their support. So thank you guys for doing that. And of course, to you, our listeners, thank you all for everything you do for us. We appreciate you guys joining us whatever time of day it is. Like Matt always says, morning, noon, or night, whenever it is you get your bourbon life fixed, we appreciate you doing that. Uh, if you want some uh, more information, reach out to us. You can find us on the Bourbon Life. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at The Bourbon Life. Or you can email us at thebourbonlife at gmail.com. If you feel so inclined, please leave us a review on your favorite podcasting platform. Also, don't forget to check out Big Tech's as Matt likes to call him, big or big, big, big Chief. And uh, send him all of the old tub you got. That's right. Send, send him all the old tub. Old that's tub. right. Yeah. yeah so Big Chief, to. doing the whiskey trip every Tuesday, that show comes out under our umbrella. He's on Instagram and Facebook as well, so give him a follow and a like, and listen to his podcast. We really appreciate that. With that said, I'm going to wrap it up, send us home with our tagline, which is, may your glasses always be full, may you keep on living the bourbon life. Cue the bio line. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the Bourbon Life Podcast. Our mission at the Bourbon Life is simple, to share our passion for all things bourbon with you every week. And we'd really love to hear your thoughts on how we're doing. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at The Bourbon Life. You can also contact us by email at thebourbonlife at gmail.com. And you can always find us on your favorite podcast platform. If you have a moment, we'd love it if you would rate us and give us a review. So until next week, we hope your glass is always full and that you keep on living the bourbon life. <laughs>